بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين ما بعد أهلا وسهلا جزاك الله for coming إن شاء الله and we make dua that Allah سبحانه وتعالى make this مبارك مجلس that we understand this pivotal ibadah and rukun of our Islam so that we can apply within our lives as well. Today's workshop is with regards to zakat. Yes, uh, it's, it is always fundamental that we look at the mustadillat, where we get these ibadat from. But when we are in a workshop setting, my personal feeling is that we must dive right into the the subject matter that is fruitful, because we can we can have multiple uh, different discourses with regards to the uh, uh, the, the abwabu zakat and the fazail of zakat and all those areas, um, but. And when it comes to uh, actual practical uh, or um, the points which actually we need to learn about working ourselves with regards to zakat, uh, most of the time the, the energy is already gone. <coughs> <coughs> so inshallah the mandate today is going to be uh, focused on understanding the different different terminologies, different concepts, different understandings of uh, of uh, where the assets are coming from, with how we are going to address them, all those aspects when it comes to calculation of the zakat and everything. This is uh, the, uh, the, today's lesson should uh, empower you to uh, not feel alienated to calculating your own zakat, looking into your own money, looking into your own income, and uh, then trying to figure out how am I going to uh, set up um, my own journal ledger or account accountability to see how much zakat I should be paying. Uh, up until now, I uh, I cannot say for you, but um, um, majority of the cases that I have understood, um, I have tackled with people, most of the time it's just personal inclination, personal understanding that people have have like oh I think this is it should be like this and they have been doing that for the last six years seven years and everything right and instead of uh, uh, focusing on <coughs> what the Sharia or what what Islam intended from them as well also keep in mind um, uh, from among the housekeeping over here this majority of the uh, today's discussion is uh, from the fiqh al Hanafi from the aspect of Hanafi fiqh, uh, yes, uh, here and there I'm going to mention uh, the the khtalafat of uh, d d different madhahib on an issue, um, and but I I uh, rely upon you. If you are not a Hanafi, you are a Shafi'i, Maliki or Hanbali, that you should have your own scholars that you revert to with regards to the issues. Yes, the concepts will still help you. Concepts will still help you to go back to your scholars and ask like, oh, on this particular matter, what is the mandate and what is the, the Shari dictate for, for us right now? But um, on a general scale, uh, uh, all these these um, concepts and everything they are going to help you out, inshallah, Aziz. So beginning, uh, uh, just as I said, um, it's always uh, vital to, for us to know where it is coming from. Now there is not one one uh, specific or one simple nas uh, that we normally utilize to establish zakat. I mean, this this is mentioned multiple times in the Quran and uh, the ahadith and go into a lot of detail at at times to ex, uh, explicitly mention uh, what, what zakat you, ha you are going to be giving, how much you have to give, wh um, what is the purpose of it that is going to purify your um, purify your, uh, your uh, earnings and your income and everything. So this is the same same uh, ayah and the same hadith that I had mentioned in the khutbah yesterday as well. وَأَقِيمَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُ الزَّكَاةَ Right, for atu zakah is a command, uh, al amr lil wujub. Uh, normally, the command when it is given, it comes by way of mandating something upon you. And from the uh, the hadith that uh, we have mentioned as well, with regards to the five different pillars of Islam, uh, it shows the st uh, stature and the standing of zakat in the obligations. M meaning, uh, should zakat be obligatory upon you, wajib upon you, then the, uh, to dispense the zakat is such an obligation. If you if you reject it, then it is uh, sufficient for for the imam or the khalifa to actually take up arms against you now obviously we are, we are not living in the khilafah 
<coughs> inshallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring future uh, uh, such that we we will have a khalifa of our own uh, uh, and we will have a sharia of our own uh, we, that does not mean we are imposing the sharia into the, these lands but we it's a, it's a, it's a dua it's a hope that uh, uh, the future will bring us that kind of an environment we would not, we would not have to fe feel a minority right so uh, when that happens then happens uh, and uh, and when that happens then then the khalifa can mandate how the zakat will be calculated how the zakat will be taken out from people and uh, what matters will be taken but until then uh, uh, it were to happen and uh, in in those situations uh, we have the incident of sayyidina abu bakr siddiq anhu which is commonly misunderstood as well sometimes that uh, after the demise of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam there was a, a tribe that refused to pay the zakat and Nabi uh, Say Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq anh, uh, took up arms against that tribe uh, to, uh, and it is normally understood in the manner that, that <clears throat> because they did not pay the zakah Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq went and, uh, ahead and fought against them uh, 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 rather the understanding uh, or the misunderstanding over there was that the, the tribe felt from the Quran from the Ahadith they made an incorrect ishtihad and that ishtihad was that, that uh, because we were imposed the zakat in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu upon us directly, now that Nabi sallallahu is not there, we were giving the zakat because Nabi sallallahu alaihi was there, right? And now that he is not there, we, uh, it is not wajib upon us that we we should give. Now this was a incorrect ishtihad leading them to make a negation of a pillar of Islam from, from angle of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq anhu, negation of a rukun of Deen that is irtidad that is going out of deen and it is that irtidad that spurred sayyidina abu bakr siddiq no he must come and make sure that they understand the masala of zakat being part part and parcel of the <coughs> deen itself and needs to be uh, uh, carried out just as it was being done before then right and that's why um, uh, the um, he, he took measures and then brought brought it back together inshallah right so what we understand from it is is uh ita zakat dispensing of the zakat is a very very uh, significant ibadah which was given its due significance in the time of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and after the demise of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa right <clears throat> and since it was it was given that much significance we must realize now that we don't have the same mechanisms of khilafa and the governance and everything like that in around us are we still going to become like the tribe and make our own ishtahad and say like, oh, it's, it doesn't really affect us? Or are we going to say, no, 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 it still affects us. It still imposes upon us and that we, we need to figure out if the Khalifa is not there to fulfill a duty for us, we need to be, uh, become the Khalifa of our own self and impose the duty upon our own self. Because in the, in, in the end, as far as you are going to go inward or whether, whether um, structurally from, up, uh, uh, from the above to below, in the end it's going to be your say, right? It's your ibadah. It's your uh, standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while the Khalifa was asking me about my cattle that he can see in the in the pastures. Now over here, uh, uh, my, my wealth is stored in the digital currencies. My wealth is stored in the banks. Nobody knows about it. There are enough encrypted securities and everything that nobody knows. Only maybe the CRA people might know a portion of what you have. But he still doesn't know what's stuffed in, inside your uh, mattresses and what you have hoarded and what you have kept for yourself. So in the end, it will all become, become your own responsibility to figure out how am I going to justify my action or inaction of dispensing the zakat in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Am I going to pick up those uh, uh, those uh, small hilas and small loopholes and everything and say like I'm muflis, I'm muflis, where, whereas I have uh, uh, some gold coins stuffed uh, somewhere in the, in, in the drawer somewhere. And I have never looked at them uh, and they have even gone out of my mind thinking that I am now muflis and I am completely miskin. So I am uh, uh, I'm eligible for the welfare and eligible for this and this and this, right? So I am going to say like, oh, I don't need to give the zakat. How many of us come here under the title of refugee, right? Uh, whereas I have seen with my own eyes, the refugees come, mashallah, and then they are driving four by fours, right? And they have nice... Uh, homes and everything but they are refugees right so the refugee title itself is not sufficient to signify in the shari sense whether you are a rich or a poor person right it is it is somewhat every, uh, every person will have to look inside no no I, uh, what is the what is the level of nisab what as uh, as we were going to uh, we are going to discuss all that what is that and whether i am above the poverty line or below the poverty line 
Am, am I a fakir or am I, am I a ghani? Right? Should I be helping others out or should others be helping me out? Right? So all those will be uh, assessed accordingly. Look, coming back to zakat itself, literal meaning of it is purity and growth. Right? Because it, uh, uh, even if we uh, later on recognize the Sharia terminology of zakat, it, it is the, what uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is imposing upon you in the mal and nabu meaning that that wealth that grows itself right so for example your cattle it grows on its own your money makes money right so your cash it grows on its own right and now obviously somebody might come and counter argue like oh you know but there is inflation and right? the money decreases right but the idea is that the, the money that you have paper currency and everything this was never the money anyway it was it, it's it has become the norm of the day that it is saman orfi but saman khalqi gold and silver it always increases in its value right it may be incremental increases but it still increases over time in the sharia terminology the the definition that is given for zakat is giving over ownership of specific portion of one's wealth specified by sharia to a needy muslim for sake of allah every word in this definition is important in, in, uh, in some of the other fiqhi books, they add at the last portion of it that um, giving ownership of specific portion of one's wealth specified by Sharia from a rich Muslim to a poor Muslim who is not a Hashimi and is neither a slave of Hashmi for sake of Allah. Right? Or neither a slave that of Hashmi may not be that there. Meaning. <clears throat> First and foremost, giving over the ownership. It is giving something, right? If I give you $10 and I tell you, beta, you need to go and you need to buy milk with this, right? This is not giving ownership. This is giving wakala. This is giving agency that you must do this with this money. So when I give you zakat or somebody who is recipient of zakat and I give $10 as a zakat, I cannot put any conditions upon it. I'm giving you the ownership to do as you want to do. Right? The person doesn't have food. You made an assessment and everything. Doesn't have food, no income. He doesn't have any possessions. He has nothing. He is genuinely zakat eligible. So you give him $500. Right? So uh, now you see that, oh, with the, with the first $500, he go, goes and starts uh, eating burgers or he start uh, 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 spending it in places where you're going to say like oh that's that's not reasonable why don't you use that money to buy maybe rice or lentils and everything uh, uh, stock up your house with the, with that kind of food that's going to last you for the next five six months right why don't you do that right so it's not your say he is going to decide to do whatever he wants to do he is mukallaf in the law for himself you are mukallaf to give him the zakat Right? He, and he is mukallaf in the sight of Allah to utilize it properly. If he doesn't do it, he will answer for it. That's his mandate. Right? So, uh, the first thing over there is the ownership. Let's look at in every other uh, element over here in the, in, the, in the definition and see what we can figure out. So, first was the ownership then. <clears throat> Second word, a specific portion. A specific portion is referring to the 40th of your uh, wealth. Uh, but that's not only the 40th of your entire wealth though, right? It's 2.5% of net zakatable assets. Net zakatable assets. It's a term that you may not have heard. Other mashayikh may use different uh, 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 terminology for this. But net zakatable asset is going to be what are your uh, zakatable assets then minus the, um, the any liabilities that are uh, zakat deductibles and then you're going to get the, the, your net zakat asset. we're going to discuss all that inshallah in, uh, in the upcoming slides as well so uh, do we ask questions at the end or uh, yes please keep your questions for later on this is why i encourage please have some book or pen or paper and uh, jot down your questions right uh, uh, other, otherwise um, uh, uh, I have seen when we do these kind of classes and the questions start rolling then everything goes sidetracked right so then coming from a rich Muslim to a poor Muslim as we discussed there is a poverty line 
and uh, zaki if if you can find some paper or something and to give no, it oh okay awesome awesome use the technology as as intended right so from a rich muslim to a poor muslim as we have understood that there is a poverty line within the sharia there is a poverty line and in the in the secular uh, uh, um, economic world as well where where uh, uh, you utilize them to figure out whether a, per a person is eligible to t get welfare or not get welfare and things like that similarly sharia has the same standard it's uh, it's not something new the civilized world has uh, come up with the the, the the poverty line was understood well before in, in our time and a welfare state was understood well before in, in the time of uh, Rasulullah sallallahu and the sahaba so and what, what is this poverty line essentially um, a, a, a level was set with regards to money right and money as i said is thaman khalqi is only gold and silver right so having having gold and silver as your currency for yourself a, a level was set at the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam at that time this uh, this um, uh, this evaluation was same for gold and silver so if we say this much gold right this many grams of gold then that had the same uh, equivalence of the same value of that many grams of silver that 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 were made the nisab. We were we are going to discuss the nisab as well. But uh, this was same as the time passed by. Centuries go on, centuries go on. The value of gold rises much faster than the silver. Right. So now there is a disparity between them. There is a differentiation between them. That's now. But essentially, uh, originally, it was the same. And that was the, the line of poverty that was kept. Now, it's a different contemporary discussion among the scholars and everything, whether we should reevaluate the Nisab. Can we do that? Do we have a mandate to do it? Because it is uh, uh, established by Nas. Uh, established by the evidences from Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and everything, do we have the right to do it or are we going to differentiate and see which nisab, which uh, 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 poverty line are we going to choose for ourselves or not. And that's, a, that's a contemporary discussion and it's still going on. Some scholars are on the fence, others choose, uh, say like, no, we have to follow gold, others say we have to follow silver and uh, regardless, whichever it is, when the concept is understood that there's going to be a threshold. And if you are under the threshold, you are poor. And if you are above the threshold, you are a rich person. As far as we understand the concept, then later on, we, the application of the, uh, the, the other uh, aspects, inshallah, we will uh, discuss uh, on the side. And another thing mentioned in the, the, the uh, de definition was that he must not be a Hashimi. Right? Now, this means that the person is not a Sayyid. The person is not from the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because understand that zakat, as much of an ibadah it is, it is still re uh, uh, relieving oneself of filth of the money. There, there, uh, filth accumulates in every aspect of our life. In on our bodies, you get filth, so you make wudu, right, and you get rid of it. Now, in 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 your money and everything, in your uh, mal wealth. Uh, slowly, 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 some filth, uh, some uh, some impurity, some deficiencies may uh, creep in, and this is why zakat was established so that it may make make your wealth tahir. Any anything that is a means of uh, Allah's anger, Allah's re uh, rebuke, and it can be warded off, and Allah's baraka can come in the remaining portion of your wealth. So your wealth is now pure after you have dispensed the zakat. So it's going to grow in with the rahmah and with the baraka of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yes. Uh, I, I just mentioned. Uh, keep jotting down the questions. Inshallah, we will do it later on. Okay. Right. And finally, uh, as I mentioned, the poverty line is the nisab that we are going to be discussing. Let's go over some of the conditions that are required when you are giving the zakat out or when you when the zakat is being calculated. Muslim, the zakat is not wajib upon non-Muslims, right? They may have jizya if they are under khalafa or something like that. They'll have their own uh, and, um, things that they will have to pay. Jizya will be paid uh, in lieu of uh, sanctity and security and aman uh, for them, uh, where they they don't have to move a finger or an arm when, whenever any calamity comes, the khilafa will take care of it, right? So they, they, will, they will pay that jizya. And uh, the, you can call it jizya tax, you can call it whatever you want to call it, but understand the concept that it is in lieu of, uh, of keeping their, their autonomy, keeping their sanctity, keeping keeping their lives and uh, untouched by uh, all other ailments that may be affecting the muslim ummah 
right but for the muslim is the zakat and it uh, also understand that today's inshallah workshop i'm i'm going to try and uh, squeeze a lot of information down and i'm going to cut out quite a bit of information that may not be affecting us for example we, we will not go into the um, cal calculating of ushar and kharaj we will not be going into the calculation of uh, uh, how to give zakat on on your animals and everything because this is not this is not a fiqh discourse this is a, a workshop so uh, unless one of you is a farmer who is uh, who, who was waiting uh, i have 200 goats and 200 uh, uh, lamb and everything how much zakat should i be giving and i mean today we will, we will not be discussing that maybe uh, uh, that can be a separate uh, class on its own to understand all those from the fiqh books inshallah another another aspect is that the zakat is to be given by adults right one who is a, a male so the, any anyone who is a minor who is a child zakat does not the wujub of zakat does not come upon him obviously this is this is one of those places that this is the opinion of the hanafiya imam abu hanifa rahmullah this is the opinion of hanafi madhab uh, if you are from from the other madhab then they have the opinion they, uh, uh, that zakat will still be paid because the mal is there and the uh, and the reason of giving out the zakat is that the mal be there we say that the the, the child is not mukallaf child is uh, does not need to be imposed with the taklif the imposition of the religious laws right only when he becomes baligh then he becomes imposed so if there is a millionaire child who is still a minor he does not give the zakat but as soon as he becomes baligh the day he becomes baligh now his uh, uh, the imposition will come you already have the the wealth uh, stored wealth uh, more than the nisab and from now on you can uh, going to wait another year until the one full year goes by so you can start dispensing the zakat from there okay another uh, issue is sane that the person should be in has have sanity he is not insane he's not gone majnoon right so understand that there are two two different types of um, uh, majnoon or uh, 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 insanities in the in the case of uh, fiqh one is majnoon al asli right a person who was born in a way that he is not in his senses anymore Right? He doesn't know what's right, what's wrong. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has take, lifted the, 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 the qalam from him. He is marfu al qalam. He is not being tasked with anything. Just like a child is not being tasked, he is not being tasked with anything. He doesn't have to pay the zakat or anything like that. Right? Uh, but there are other insanities that come as you live along. You are fine. You are completely fine. Uh, depression kicked in to such an extent that you have now lost your senses. You have no uh, no understanding what's happening. It, this may be temporary. This may be prolonged. If the if it is uh, within, within um, if it is not asli and it, it is temporary, then uh, then you uh, and it's prolonged. Then it's going to be treated just like the majnun al asli. But if it is less than one year right so uh, uh, you you will recover before before one year then we will say it's, it was a temporary setback and you uh, you are still liable for the wealth that you have you have to dispense as as per the shari requirements then owner of nisab uh, uh, meaning the person must have that net zakatable assets um, equivalent to nisab now when we are going to talk about net zakatable asset it will also mean you, you need to start learning and categorizing which asset is what right where does a particular asset belong to when we talk about an asset it could be a fixed asset it could it could be a, a current asset it could be a receivable it could be many, many different uh, assets uh, that we may be faced with where are we going to put them in uh, and which ones are going to become zakatable that's going to be coming up ahead in the next few slides slides as well not only that that you have the zakatable assets themselves but you have retained those zakatable assets for over a year that is what is considered that you have saved up the money right so a person who is already hands to mouth although he may be able to say like oh at any given day i have two hundred dollars right but that does not mean that you have retained that two hundred dollar benchmark for the entire year okay it's a different situation According to the Aima Salatha, Maliki, Shafi, Hanbali, they say when we talk about retaining the same benchmark, what it means is throughout the year, all the time must have more than the Zakat Nisab. Okay? According to Hanafiya, we look at the start and the finish. So the day you become the Sahib Nisab, the person attains the Nisab amount, then he is, he is going to put up pinpoint. 
he's going to peg, peg, put a peg there and then he's going to wait for the next lunar year and look for that point and see whether he has he is above nisab here above nisab here if he is now he has retained it for the whole year okay so this means when we are looking at um pe pegging the, the points in uh, for our uh, um, our, our uh, uh, income and everything it there has to be a cycle involved right so the cycle will come up ne next but before that how much is this nisab that we are talking about what's this uh, uh, this uh, poverty line so if uh, as you said we're going to go about by gold or by silver right so if you're going by gold uh, keep this uh, this number in mind it's important 87.479 grams okay 87.49 grams of gold and when we say gold it has to be pure gold inshallah we will discuss later on about the purity of gold the current value as i calculated yesterday was um 5744.75 canadian right this is for the gold nisab and then for the silver it is 612.35 grams right 612.35 grams and the current value for that is only 404 dollars 15 cents right so nisab amount should be calculated on the day of calculating your zakat Many, many many websites they give out all these indices on on them when you go into their websites and uh, they, on, they have on the side like oh mahar is this much and zakat nisab for gold is this and for silver is this now uh, always make sure the day they have calculated it because many of them they are manually calculating it and it's, it's calculated like maybe months ago or weeks ago some some of them they give a daily calculation so here is my caution to uh, to you because you will be doing what uh, your Yourself. um not necessarily all of those indices are reflective of the true amount okay because they use widgets and apis that that take the one generic figure from elsewhere and then simply use the currency rate to convert it to canadian dollars right so we are liable for zakat based on the nisab of our area our land that is canada okay it cannot be that you you get a bullion rate from us and then convert it into canadian dollar and think that that is canadian and is up they would there would be a difference yeah may not be much of a difference but they, they will be a band some people would be uh, actually on on the fence over there and they may lose out on their ibadah so we uh, when we talk about ibadah and calculation and all these things we try to be as uh, specific as possible um, uh, uh, for, for that inshallah I will help you out with with uh, how you can go out and calculate with, because you don't have to rely on organization providing you the indices figures as well right so now understand uh, because as I said Nis uh, Nisab over the centuries it has changed now 5744 is much higher than 404 what, what what was Nisab supposed to tell us if you have more uh, uh, more saving savings than this much then you are a rich person and you have to give Zakat right so if you are using the silver Nisab right just having $500 uh, in your saving account or, uh, or something like that you are already Sahib Nisab even even though you you may be uh, you, uh, you may not be as wealth and uh, wealthy and everything but you are you are already rich Kalas. see the aim is reached see, uh, uh, we always say like oh uh, my my child will not marry until he becomes uh, like you know a uh, hundred thousand no not need five hundred dollars enough right so <laughs> that's the richness but if you take the gold nisab if you take the gold nisab then that's considerable 5700 is a considerable amount especially when it's it's free of any kind of liabilities and everything right so many of us we may be sitting with five thousand dollars but we may have other liabilities along with it so we may not be covering up that portion and still not be there now um, do, do we want to go into the discussion of which to take um, uh, there are two concepts that are taken Fukaha give two different usuls right which are utilized by the muftiya one is the usul is we always pick the lower of the two and the reason why they do that is because of the other usul we will always follow the path which is anfa'il al right which is more beneficial for the masakin and for the poor people 
So their ideology at that time, um, in the past thousand years of choosing silver over gold is, if we adopt silver as the poverty line, more people are going to give the zakat. Right? And as more people are going to give the zakat, then the more masakin they will get more money, and they will the the baseline of wellness is going to go up. Right? That's the rationale that they normally say always choose silver. But at the same time, now in the contemporary times, this this discussion is coming up ahead. That uh, is this really benefiting the poor? that more people uh, are giving out the zakat that is helping the poor or not right so it, it, uh, because even if 10% of the people actually take out the zakat but they are all from the gold nisab the actual amount of the zakat will be more than uh, the people who are giving out at the, at the silver because imagine 404 dollars okay make it for 405 dollars right and then uh, calculate 2.5% of that that's that's going to be a very very insignificant amount compared to 2.5 percent for the uh, for the nisab of the gold so if even if lesser people in the uh, from the more rich community are going to give up out the zakat the, the chances the the um the statistics could be that the overall zakat would be more than those giving out in the silver right it's something debatable something uh, for for the scholars to look into uh, whether uh, whether they want to go for this or not but uh, essentially you need to choose what's be beneficial for the fuqara as long as the purpose is to cleanse your own uh, wealth right if you have a thousand dollars free from all liabilities would you be willing to give out 2.5 percent to fulfill an ibadah to fulfill uh, get it done not having to worry about the debate then give it out Right. This is why Imam Abu Hanifa says that uh, that uh, let, uh, let a person decide as well. He is Rai Muqtala bi'i. Let him decide. If he wants to give, let him give the zakat. Right. Even, even though he may, according to the gold nisab, he may be a poor person. Okay. <coughs> the website that I normally use is called CanadaGold.ca. CanadaGold.ca, and they give you the uh, uh, give you spot rate for the gold. Uh, understand that we don't only i hope that's the next one yeah i hope uh, 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 understand that we 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 don't want bullion rate itself what we want is if you have ever gone to a jeweler back home in pakistan india you would realize this they don't give you the money for the jewelry they'll say we'll melt it we'll remove impurities we'll take the stones out and the nugget that's going to be left out we're going to give you the value of that Okay. So you don't want, uh, when you are calculating the nisab amount or your own value of your own gold jewelry and everything, you don't look at the bullion rate, what's the, what's the uh, selling rate and the buying rate. Instead, you go down on Canada Gold, all the way down, it says scrap metal calculator. Okay, And it's going to give you gold or silver and it's going to ask you for the purity. How many, uh, how many carat should, should it be, right? So choose gold, choose 24 carat, put uh, weight as one gram and calculate and it's going to give you an amount right so uh, you can choose the, uh, it might give you two different amounts um, you can choose the higher amount for yourself okay <coughs> now this will be on a particular day so whenever you're calculating the cost for yourself use this on that particular day sometimes like uh, on a weekend or something like that the market may be closed right but still it'll give you the last uh, rate that was there beforehand okay and uh, same website you can use for silver as well obviously silver is not sold in carats right so it uh, i think if i remember correctly this website has three different uh, options uh, you can you can choose uh, one is mexican and then one is something else right uh, i always choose the first one right so, and and, and uh, it, it normally gives a very spot on rates for myself so remember I said, I said like once we realize that the nisab is to be calculated on its own and that we have to peg points for ourselves when we are calculating. So the cycle is formed. Now this is the cycle. As a person growing up, uh, starting to get uh, income and everything and all that, right? First, uh, first step, the first milestone you are going to reach is that your, your net zakatable assets are going to reach the nisab amount. 
okay whichever nisab you want to establish 407 dollars or 57700 whichever you are going to choose for yourself uh, 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 be true to yourself sincere to yourself because it's an ibadah don't try to uh, uh, think like oh if i'm going to swindle over here let me just take the gold nisab i'm not uh, i don't i don't have enough net zakat e balasir it's going to backfire right because because with allah subhanahu wa taala sincerity is that matters okay you chose the gold one whereas your heart was telling you no 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 choose the choose the silver one right so wh what's happened you're not going to give the zakat you you retained uh, in your heart sincerity you retained the khabasat that you were supposed to get out you were supposed to leave out right so what's this uh, that khabasat is going to bring baraka of allah subhanahu wa taala no it's not going to bring baraka of allah ana inda zan abd bi right allah is going to treat us on the way the, uh, that we approach him if we are going to try and deceive and swindle from allah subhanahu wa taala khalas then allah subhanahu wa taala is going to leave the baraka out of our life and, and, and so first first uh, point you are going to reach is this level where you going to your net zakatable assets are now at nisab now you point out on the calendar okay this is my date start date of having the nisab Okay, it's it's going to make an important point. Next point is going to be let a year pass from that moment, and this is a lunar year again. It's not a solar year. So uh, uh, whichever a lunar date it comes on, first find out what's the lunar date on that day, right? And then find out. Uh, uh, back point. I'm going to check next year on this particular date how much net zakatable assets I have. You uh, once that's going to happen after the one year, you will see. Now, if you have, if you still have more than the nisab amount, then you are a rich person, and you need to give out two point five percent of your net net zakatable asset in zakat. What will you do after that? It's going to keep on continuing. The cycle is going to continue for the entire year. Now, don't worry about in between. money may go down money may go up money may go down as long as in the end you have the uh, above uh, nisab uh, you can calculate the entire year accordingly right by the uh, by the um, amount that you have at the last moment okay this cycle will continue unless you lose all your money complete bankruptcy you completely become muflis everything got burned down and you don't have anything left right then this cycle is broken or you check the next year and the uh, your net zakatable asset were lower than the nisab you are no longer rich you are a poor person so now that uh, that um, a cycle has ended now you can receive zakat not dispense zakat okay so that will be the last point and then is going to continue again you're going to go keep on going again next year maybe uh, it, it's possible it goes above above again that being said uh let's see okay let me let me give uh, uh, next 5 minutes for the questions okay so then i can tackle the next portion of it inshallah yes let us two for example uh, There's a person A who is giving out uh, zakat based on silver, mm. and person B is receiving based on gold. Mm. Uh, then uh, would person B be eligible to receive zakat? This question came up. I I spoke to multiple muftis, and in, including those uh, muftiyan who who actually hold uh, now um, American Fiqh Academy, by the way, uh, headed by Mufti Faraz, uh, Mufti uh, Abrar Mirza Sahab. Um, They, they have a resolution that we no longer going to uh, follow the silver nisab we are going to follow the uh, gold nisab right so uh, i have discussed the issue with him as well and i have discussed with other scholars as well this is always going to be a gray gray, uh, gray area because of the disparity between the silver and the gold prices so what i would suggest is if you are dispensing zakat be sincere in the dispensation of it right the person who is receiving you don't uh, judge his uh, sincerity maybe his he is adopting according to the silver nisab and he is poor on that or he is adopting gold and he is poor on that right and, and, uh, if for now at least for this time we we can let it be uh, relied on the sincerity of the individual who is giving or who is receiving right then and, and we can hope from allah subhanahu wa taala because the sincerity is there if there is any kind of uh, uh, deficiency allah will will forgive from that The other question is about ownership. Yes. So we can 
to my understanding, we can give uh, Shahad in terms of uh, uh, one guy. Yeah. If that's the case, would that void uh, ownership because we are uh, in, we are imposing that this is only Allah, right? So you can only use it for eating or whatever. No, no, it will not void the ownership at all. Uh, in fact, uh, we, we are going to discuss in, in uh, one of our Q&As, inshallah, or the frequently asked questions, that, that you can actually pay the zakat in kind. And you can choose how you uh, you pay the zakat. It's not a problem. As long as the requirement of the ownership is found. So when that comes, inshallah, you, your answer, your question will be answered in more detail. And G. I have uh, two questions. Hmm. Uh, the first question is, uh, when you mentioned that uh, there are some charitable organizations who for example, so they give the charity in, in form of zakat to children who are becoming happy or in terms of like Ramadan basket for example uh, in, in the farms where there is no ownership of actual assets per se mm. so what's the uh, ruling on that? We'll come to that okay. yeah inshallah uh, that's, that's one of the major uh, discussion inshallah the second question is about uh, uh, you talked about the minor okay. so what determines the ownership or possession, possession of the wealth for a minor. Like, how do we understand? You are um, uh, uh, parents are only guardians over the minor. Okay, the uh, the wealth belongs to the minor. The you cannot use the wealth of the minor for your own benefit. It has to be used for the benefit of the child itself. Okay, so if if you have a child, somebody gave a gift, uh, let's say ten thousand dollars to your child, right? It's his. It's not yours as a parent. Islam Islam keeps all these independence of monetary ownership for everyone right so, so we, we maintain that the, uh, now because you are a guardian o over him as long as he's a minor zakat is not uh, obligated on him now people go around and they try to swindle or find a loophole uh, to impose to, to, to circumvent zakat by uh, giving gifts to their own children right my I, I have mashallah uh, so much gold right uh, jewelry um, uh, um, mummy has so much gold jewelry can't give zakat from it because she's not earning she's sit sitting at home so uh, let me just put it on uh, uh, choti zainab's uh, but what they what they have in mind that they're not actually giving it to her they are uh, circumventing but they're still going to use the jewelry yeah, jewelry no longer belongs to them like they have savings account for kids like in canada where they Yes. Do the same thing for the same thing yes. and anything, any savings or anything like that that uh, that belongs to the child, it's theirs. After they become balik, then inshallah they will pay the zakat on it, right? Uh, the father will not be paying the zakat, or the mother will not be paying the zakat. Yes. So my question is, uh, who is heightening? Like only the Hazrat Fatma, uh, 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 Nasab or uh, Hazrat Ali, otherwise Nasab too or uh, Banu Hashim, Banu Hashim from the top. And all the branches that come under it, so, they will all be Hashmis. So, other nasabs uh, that are not belong to uh, the Fatma are also Hashmi. So, they, they also cannot take Zakat. Yes, that's right. Okay. As long as they are under Hashmi, they will not be able to take Zakat. Okay. Uh, uh, now, uh, 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 another addendum on that is whether that nasab is actually gen genuinely established or not that uh, we can't really figure it out because uh, you you go to iran or you go to pakistan uh, in, uh, uh, almost every third person is a sayyid right but uh, why is he a sayyid we don't know right uh, we've been told we are a sayyid right so there are there have been many instances of fake sayyids found out not by uh, intention is uh, yeah because because somewhere along the line and the forefathers they uh, uh, they attributed to somebody else who was a sayyid who whose name was a sayyid and now they are following the, oh we are sayyid mashallah okay so if if a, uh, if a sayyid is poor then then what the what the other gift way? give him hiba giving i mean he is the progeny of rasulullah sallam doesn't he deserve our uh, good wealth rather than uh, our khadis wealth yeah, right but this is how it should be but when we see in our environment we see a lot of sayyid people doing uh, doing different kind of work and they are poor and they are like what we say safed uh, poor but nobody uh, helps them there is no uh, organization or anything who helps sayyid mm -hmm. Also, in, I've seen in Pakistan and other areas too. So, 
what we should do to uh, help them no the, the, i mean see the, that's not a fiqhi issue in the sense that is an administrative and a, and more of a governance governance issue the government should i mean it's islamic government it's, uh, islamic state of pakistan so they should have measures of uh, taking care of these people now they are making everything in pakistan as a welfare state right so regardless of welfare state uh, they, they will have the, all the um, uh, understanding who is a sayyid and who is not a sayyid a sayyid person who is falling below the poverty line they should be helping him out just from their own side rather rather than, and people wouldn't mind it actually right if if they if they know that their pure their their nice money is going to help somebody else who is the progeny of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sar aankhon pe they are, they are going to go and help out right so no, that's that's more of a governance issue thank you okay okay so yeah uh, so when when we trying to like see who is safe family so we will see like from the fathers like we will see the father or like mother like maybe yeah. mother is sayyid maybe father is not sayyid uh, again that that's there's a complete pandora's box you, you're going to open to discuss all that <laughs> right uh, so the, yeah here we are just uh, uh, assessing if a person is a bona fide sayyid so we are uh, or bona fide uh, uh, hashmi so we are not going to give him zakat right so uh, they, you you'll find many people you are going to ask them and they're going to say yes yes i'm i'm hashmi they come, uh, come the zakat time right no 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 i i need money right you, you will find definitely right so uh, uh, we don't want to go into that discussion at the moment but th th that is something that, that should be done on on a um, uh, more organizational scale if some masjid is taking charge to dispense zakats in all, all these areas then the masjid should take the responsibility of finding out what the progeny is and everything are so how about the child care money like in, in canada like all the family like mostly like they receive the child benefit yes we're going to talk about that inshallah later on okay jazia jazia uh, if you are a, a non muslim living in a muslim land right if you are a non muslim living in a muslim land where everything is run islamically then a uh, non muslim will pay a, a form of a fee right that fee is going to secure that the government is going to take care of you you don't have to go uh, go out of the way to protect our land to become uh, become like a soldier or anything we are going to protect everything for you okay so we, uh, you, you can retain your own religion you can re uh, keep on uh, being whatever you want to be in your home nobody is going to trouble you right so but they have to make that payment for the uh, the fee for it Okay. Same thing happens, by the way, in Canada and all those areas. All uh, uh, all the Western countries they they have um, uh, this kind of a differentiation between a citizen and uh, a non citizen. Any any student who comes from all the other countries to come study here, they have to pay double the fee, double uh, double of their uh, uh, fees and everything. So they are they are charging the same thing, right? Just to just to give her the same education, right? Let's continue forward now. Now let's look at some of the forms of assets and how we're going to categorize them and everything, right? The first category would be the money, right? It could be cash in hand, cash in the bank, in any of your accounts or anything like that. Your wallet, your safety deposit, your mattress, your pillow, whatever you want to think of. All those cash and everything, they're all zakatable asset. Okay, they all are cold hard cash. then you, uh, some of uh, some of us we are going to uh, secure like uh, gold or jewelry or bullion right in the uh, uh, some some may have uh, bank accounts in in uh, dubai or all these areas where they actually hold gold for you right so you can you can have those um, uh, any nuggets that you have kept any inheritance that is coming down and the gold jewelry uh, uh, is coming down or anything like that and um, the, the collector items you have those small small uh, slabs of gold or silver or something that you uh, and that you keep in your safety deposits or anything all those co coins uh, uh, gold coins gold jewelry uh, silver coins all those will be zakatable in themselves right uh, now we don't uh, uh, the hanafia do not differentiate between the jewelry that you wear and the jewelry that you don't wear 
okay uh, among the other uh, other mashayikh they they uh, they understand to be any wearable jewelry that is a, a normal a regular uh, uh, like item uh, of ho home uh, usage and everything so no zakat on them but according to us we, it, it is still a saman e khalqi it is gold and zakat will be paid on the gold content of it okay now uh, uh, one one um, highlight under this is white gold white gold many people have white gold jewelry and white gold bracelets and things like that it's a uh, white gold in, uh, is a alloy of gold with the, at least like with gold on one side and or on the other side you may have silver palladium nickel or manganese right so the only two we are worried about is gold and silver if it's a combination between gold and silver then you are going to assess the actual percentages of the gold and the silver within the within the item itself if it is in between gold and uh, palladium or nickel or manganese any, any of that we don't care about palladium manganese and, and nickel we only want to know how much is the actual gold in there and then we will cal calculate the value of that gold add that to our zakatable assets okay and now uh, the, uh, uh, we'll come we do other yeah next one non zakatable asset we'll discuss something more about the metals as well now next thing that comes is most uh, very uh, interesting one is stock in trade this this topic of stock in trade although it's just the name stock in trade but it it, it can be uh, applying to you if you are doing something uh, buying and selling at home right it could it, it could apply to your home businesses it could apply to big corporations big factories all those areas uh, it could be your 7 eleven uh, you're running running the store uh, where you are owner of the, uh, the the store and everything so all these stock in trade are going to be applied over there um, uh, keep in mind these stock in trade can be zakatable and not zakatable so house land or any commodity any merchandise bought with the intent of sale when you purchase any of the, these commodities even is land or a house with the intention of selling it okay then it becomes a, a stock and trade because you, you're going to buy it you're going to put it on the market to resell it right now rental income on on these same fixed land and uh, houses and condos and apartments and all these areas right rental income will be zakatable and asset, uh, asset you're going to add it into your zakatable assets okay but when you are going to be using the rental income the actual capital is not going to be zakatable if if it's intention of sale you won't rent it right same time if the rental is not yeah so th that's the thing if you buy with the intention of uh, selling and then you you find out the market is not good enough so you put it on rent now the intention has moved over to rental now now the land is your property your in, uh, your capital but your rental is now your c uh, uh, continuous income and that's going to be zakatable right so the not the land this is why even if you buy a house or something with uh, with no surreal or no uh, succinct intention in the beginning but you start living there khalas is your land to live there is no zakat on it right but the, thereafter when you decide okay no now i'm uh, going to sell it out let me move into an apartment uh, for myself and sell this thing out now you uh, uh, at this time you will not put it in zakatable once you put it in uh, uh, in the, the paper to sell it and the deal goes through now it is mutahakkak that it is a, a stock trade that has been sold so now the in money that came in you can add that into your zakatable asset right now uh, obviously that's provided if you're calculating your zakat at that time after two months three months you used up all the money right then it's all uh, already gone away uh, you will uh, calculate on the day of your calculation for zakat what what money is left over from there added into zakatable asset right so rent, rent income, that should amount to at least the nisab, right? <coughs> okay see understand once we have discussed um, made our discussion about what is the level of nisab now we are only going to discuss here that all uh, uh, where these assets are going to be whether they're going to be zakatable or non zakatable i don't want you to get confused that they these independent um, uh, uh, commodities have to reach the level of nisab 
don't 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 confuse yourself because we are going to when when you are calculating the zakat you're going to get the value of all these items and accumulate them add them up right and then you are going to subtract all the liabilities right that's the easiest way to do it i i have been uh, you know head butting with these things for quite some time yes most ideal in the time of sahaba and when you you didn't have all these uh, networking of eco economies and everything they would they would by ideal nature look at every single commodity separately to find out what uh, whether the zak uh, nisab is being reached if it's in the goats and the lamb and the cattle is the zak uh, nisab being reached okay then uh, give, give from the uh, the same nisab right if gold is being reached give from the gold if silver being reached give from silver right now our commodities and and assets have become so diverse that to do that it's going to be that you you will be spending more time just trying to figure things out and less time actually dispensing it okay what my question is let's say i own a house and there's two floors hmm. and i rent the bottom floor and i work as well in another correct floor. now i have two income streams okay one <coughs> is from my rental and the other that's coming from uh, my job yeah now all that is income Everything all the incomes, everything yeah, income. doesn't matter. Now, all of that income, once it reaches Nisab, then I'm going to give uh, zakat on it, right? Uh, what, what you would be doing, remember, when we, we put pegs for, uh, in the beginning yeah, exactly. at the end, at the end of the, uh, the year, when you're going to open up your books to review any income that is uh, that you have in your accounts from all those rental incomes at that day, you're going to add into the Right, so you won't have to worry whether that income reached then is our rod. You will just take that and add it into your calculation over there at that. Time. Yes. Okay. Similarly, stock and merchandise and trade, right, it will be calculated at the market price. So, um, or the or the, uh, the the sale price. If uh, these are like finished goods that are sitting on the shelf and everything, you will be calculating at the market price. If uh, the the I, the concept is, if you were to liquidate right now and get rid of all the uh, the uh, all of it right now, what would it bring you? That would be your amount of uh, stock in trade at that moment. Okay, and that's what you're going to add into your zakatable assets. Okay, then crops and cattle they have completely uh, their own way of calculation. Right, we are not going to be uh, dealing with that, but they are zakatable. Know in your mind that perhaps back home or something, you may have a land that is that is actually churning out crops, or the, the, uh, that uh, that has your uh, cattle, cows uh, for milking, and all these things. Then you need to know that they, uh, you need to figure out whether I have any liability of zakat on the, over there or not. Finally, the savings. The stocks, shares, pensions, debts, receivables, uh, including the, the 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 debt receivables, the debts you have actually given out, or they, you are uh, supposed to get those credits from somewhere else, money from somewhere else, that will be your uh, zakatable asset. We're going to look at them in a slightly more detail later on. Which ones are we going to add? Which ones are we not going to add? Right. The stocks and shares. Keep in mind that this is by going by view of the understanding of the scholars who say stocks and shares are permissible. Right. Now, uh, just just because I'm saying it's, uh, it's zakatable does not mean that they uh, uh, they are completely permissible and you can go ahead. There there are nuances involved, taqwa levels involved, and the fatwa levels involved. We're not discussing those fields over here. Okay. So contrary to the zakatable asset. On the other side, non-zakatable asset, non-gold and silver jewelry, diamonds, metal, stones, anything that you can think of, all the other jewelry, um, uh, what do you call that, the imitation jewelry, uh, you, you've got uh, uh, bricks of brass or uh, other, other metals lying around, none of that is zakatable. Gold plated is not the same as gold, it is not zakatable, right? Uh, there is another thing called fool's gold. Maybe some some dentist is sitting here. They might be able to tell you. Um, and, uh, fool's gold uh, (NPG) uh, is uh, what what they now use for teeth coverings, right? So th that that is not gold. That is uh, other uh, material that uh, uh, that is used instead of gold, right? So unless you are using pure gold and everything for the filling and everything uh, the general fatwa is that that there is no zakat on that but uh, on these uh, gold tooth and everything like that now now it's not an industry practice at all to use that the real gold okay uh, similarly platinum 
Platinum is not white gold as many people misunderstand it to be. Platinum is, is a uh, metal on its own. It is not Zakatiba. Okay. Then again, that doesn't mean you, ha you should be wearing uh, pl platinum jewelry, right? And just because we are categorizing them as zakatable or not zakatable and everything doesn't mean that they in themselves are completely okay it's, it's like it's like i tell you that um, oh um, uh, steel is not zakatable doesn't mean that you have to wear chains of the steel right hadith clearly mentioned wearing metal metal jewelry and bracelets and everything that that is the ornaments for the hellfire Right, so we 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 don't we don't use that. We, women uh, will use gold jewelry, silver jewelry, right, or uh, plated jewelry. So in, in that case, we know whether it's zakatri or not zakatri. But they, uh, women shouldn't be wearing uh, other metal jewelry in any way. Just spice checking here, but can men wear like a stainless steel ring? Right. Yes. Unless you want to be pulled with that stainless steel ring towards the heated versions of <laughs> they give it to engineers when they I know I know it's from the specific bridge yeah. that <laughs> imagine uh, from, from the the folly of engineering you get the the uh, the irony within it subhanallah okay second thing commodities cars bikes cell phone appliances all these things all the bling bling that you normally go around with they are not zakatable right when will they become zakatable they will become zakatable if you are renting them out, leasing them out. Then they will have their uh, income from it, and that income is going to be zakatable. Right? Otherwise, they are not zakatable. Yes, obviously, if you are going to have uh, rims made out of pure gold, okay, then that, that's something you'll uh, you'll have to calculate and give zakat on. But uh, I would suggest not to do that. <laughs> Next is land. House, condo, apartment, range, garage, all these areas that uh, that you keep, uh, they in themselves are not uh, uh, mal and nabu. They don't uh, they don't have growth in them in themselves, right? But uh, so they are not zakatable. The only thing would be then uh, when you are going to be renting them out, then the rent is going to be zakatable. Property acquired with the intent of hold without selling as its primary objective is not zakatable. As we as we discussed, one question that came, uh, comes normally is, what's the default in purchasing? So default in purchasing is not reselling, right? Default in purchasing is to acquire the ownership of the of the item and keep holding it for yourself. So that's why when uh, when we say that you have to have the intent of resell, that's something uh, something out of norm that you must have your intent. If you purchase something without any clear indication of what kind of intention it is, then the default is you're gonna hold it. Now, if you change it to uh, to sell it or something, then its own rules will apply. When once it's sold, the income is going to be zakatable. Like you can't have two intentions. That's the thing. No, like for example, if someone wants to sell it in three years, but also collect the rent. Yeah, exactly. Your immediate intention is to use the rent, okay, so it's not for sale. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So and this is why I mean, and this this confusion was going out in in the in in our WhatsApp group as well. That oh, oh I mean, we buy the land, but it's deep down we have the intention when the price is going to go up, we're going to sell it. Yeah, but that in that intention you can assess what am I going to do it with it right now? Am I holding it or am I selling it? If you're holding it, it's not for sell, right? So in terms of calculating the cost, then that intention kicks in. in terms of calculating. When the intention kicks in and you actually sell it out, okay. yeah. If you buy it with the intention of sell, then it's actually a stock in trade. It's not. It's 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 something that uh, that has to be calculated as an asset that that is waiting to be get uh, gotten rid of. Okay. Right. Let's talk some, uh, a little bit about working with gold. Right, gold jewelry, and this, and uh, and uh, we always use this uh, term carrot. Right, it's not a carrot. Uh, it's it's just the term of purity. How much how many how much percentage of gold is in uh, pure gold? Uh, uh, hundred percent uh, uh, gold is very very malleable and very very soft. Okay. So you cannot have 100% pure gold uh, lying around that you can use and it's also very heavy as well, right? So what, what do they do is they mix uh, uh, impurities within it. 
they may choose what to purify it with uh, depending on what kind of coloring they want what kind of uh, uh, rigidity they want and things like that right so uh, similarly understand that only the gold portion of it is zakatable okay now i want you to in your mind travel about 1000 years ago when they didn't have these kind of uh, really advanced ways of measuring the wavelengths and measuring the densities and everything to figure out how much a gold exact percentage is there in, in a particular brick or a jewelry or some, a nugget or something like that every uh, uh, every ore that comes out it will have more impurity and less gold in that right so now you can utilize uh, all these new fancy technology to uh, the jewelers can tell you uh, to the thousandth of a gram that how much gold would there be in there right so they can do it they couldn't do it before so since they couldn't do it before fiqh had a another usul that we used that was called lil aksari hukmul kul for the majority we shall rule the, as total right if it is 51% gold then we will treat the entire thing as gold right whatever is the majority we will say that, that, now that, this rule should not be used to make evidence for democracy lilaksari hukmal kar majority will rule no this is for for indications of these areas where Uh, the jewelers uh, mostly the jewelers they had to calculate uh, uh, their own gold and everything for zakat right for the, because they have stock in trade they need to pay out zakat on those things so they would rule out okay this particular jewelry or this jewelry set that i have made i have put pearls in there i have put stones rubies this sapphire and all those along with the the bordering of the gold within it in in, in totality this is like 2 kilos right but the gold content within it removing all the stones everything it's only comes down to maybe like 50 grams right so he he knows that it's 50 gram but that 50 gram too is it the pure gold 24 carat or 25 carat as is the 100% right no it is mixed so he knows and he is going to find how much percentage it is right they they couldn't do it so they would say like okay the whole 50 gram is gold put it on even if it is 18 carat right a big chunk of impurity so this table shows you 9 carat means 9 out of 24 are gold 9 parts out of 24 parts are gold that is 37% it's not even 50% gold so if you had a bangle that was 9 carat in the older times you would not pay zakat on it okay you would say it's it's a, it's a minority gold so it does not even uh, come in compute computation 10 carat gold 41.6 12 carat gold 50% right when it is 50 50 you uh, err towards the side of um, uh, uh, caution that is you pay the zakat on it right out of ihtiyat The, uh, 14 18 22 18 22 and 24 are more normal for the 24 karat gold you, uh, you'll hardly find in the western side it's only when uh, among the uh, the purest of arabs and the purest of the, uh, india pakistan they they like to have like jewelry with 24 karat gold right over here it will be like 20 karat 18 karat or, or, or something like that and that you can see it doesn't have the same shine so it doesn't have the same gravity gravity within it as well right but regardless the case the old uh, uh, understanding was all this 14 18 22 24 24 all all of them would be considered as 100% gold now right and they would give the zakat uh, uh, on 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 the entirety of it now that the uh, that the mechanism has come to separate uh, without actually separating right then we realize we are actually giving zakat on only the gold portion of it so as long as you you can figure out the exact grams you will you will add that to your um zakatable assets okay right same thing with silver by the way silver will uh, can also have impurity if it has impurity then you have to find the exact silver amount as well okay uh, in in case if it is now if it is uh, the combination between gold and silver then separately you are going to put in in different areas older times if the gold was more than the silver right the entirety would be treated as gold if the silver was more than the gold entirety would be treated as silver right nowadays i have seen some of the scholars they have misunderstood this masala 
of of uh, um, uh, of this uh, the, the mixture right and they uh, tend to realize as say can be because, just because we have the table now we can uh, find out what what the percentage is and then apply according to that even and, and they say like oh um lil aksari hukmul kul right so they say like okay um, even even if it is uh, uh, less than uh, like 12 carat now right then you you will apply or give the give the payment of for the entire thing that's the old masla the masla has been revised now right now we don't apply the luxury hukmul kul because we can separate books are very clear in mentioning if it is able to separate and you are able to separate everything to find out how much is gold then you will pay on the gold right otherwise you will make this early luxury book right let's see man okay a little more detail on the business and the stock and trade huh? all, all all the fun fun stuff okay it's only fun when you have money in the hand <laughs> In a partnership, if you're running a musharaka partnership, every partner is responsible for their own percentage share calculation of their personal zakat. Okay. Essentially, being a partner in a business, you have a share in it. That's exactly what the stocks are. Right. So you're going to be responsible for your own calculation. But sometimes the companies, they are decent companies right the corporations are decent corporations especially when we don't think about it mega corporations we're thinking about a small level you know um, a, a shop a string of couple of shops running and everything and mashallah both of them are muttaqi people and everything then you realize that uh, the, the, the the company in itself they want to dispense zakat for themselves as a company right if they plan to do that they will do the same thing for the for the company in itself and find the net zakatable assets and then pay zakat upon it upon that and thereafter they uh, they are going to give the zakat out but you as a shareholder in there because your zakat for that company has been paid out through that you'll have to reconcile your own zakat calculations with it right because remember these are your assets as a partner these are your assets and your uh, your own liabilities and everything dispensation of haram portion now uh, uh, yes the, uh, when when you are in a, in a um, in a partnership with a company or something especially in the western environment where there will be other haram elements within it right this uh, because we understand um, uh, this is not the place for that discussion that that uh, even even though there may be like four to five percent of uh, the, the wealth in, involved in some kind of a haram activity you can still invest in the company right Mufti Taqi Usman Sahib has detailed understanding of uh, those areas but that uh, um, the onus of removing that 5% of khabasat from your income that you're going to get out from that place that still remains so you cannot say that oh that 5% of the profits that I'm throwing out without any intent for rewards that is from my zakat dispensation. you cannot do that right you are going to give the zakat from after having uh, uh, subtracted that whatever is left from there you're going to calculate the zakat and everything okay right as we discussed before finished goods will be valued at sale price but unfinished goods that is the raw materials a question came to me about i think a month and a half or two months ago um, somebody they are they are run, running um, uh, you know etsy or facebook uh, marketplace business uh, of uh, selling trinkets small trinkets bracelets uh, earrings and stuff like that with different different items so they they are using different stones right rubies and this and that all those stones which they purchase and they at any given time they have a uh, raw material stacked up uh, amounting to about like five thousand or seven thousand dollars or something right so all of that is stock in trade as we said right so that raw material that is sitting by there that will be calculated at the market price price right but those trinkets that they have already fixed up and they have kept aside for selling now they will be calculated at a sale price what what sale price you have set it up for the market okay then, and then it will be added accordingly some other miscellaneous assets any money that is kept for safekeeping very important because this question keeps on coming to us 
Mufti sahab, you have kept money aside for the Hajj. Right? Do I have to pay zakat on it? Okay. The, the money is still in your ownership. It is by safe. Uh, it, it, it does not matter whether you have kept it for zakat purposes or any other purposes. For uh, I have kept money for the for the uh, marriage of my daughter. Okay, you have not transferred the ownership of the, that to to your daughter as yet. So it's your still your money that is kept aside, right? So you will assess which one are zakatable assets within there. If it's jewelry stuff like that, it will be zakatable. Right. Similarly, if you have kept money uh, uh, as a safekeeping by somebody else as an amana, it's it's your money, it's your assets. You will give zakat on that. That will be zakatable. You will have to add them together. Similarly, any other place that you can think of that that money is actually yours and it's being it's it's just sitting aside, waiting for be applied in its purpose. It's still money in hand that you need to apply. Advance payments or down deposits are towards a purchase. Okay. Right. Now I just said that put, keeping money aside, you have to pay zakat on it. Now you are not going to make an assumption that the down deposit that you have made for the purchase of the house, right? That is also money set aside. No, you have actually paid it out. It's gone out of your ownership and into the ownership of the other individual. So that money does not belong to you. It is, it is towards the purchase of the house and there is no zakat on it. Okay. Benefits received from the bank or oh, benefits received from the government as we were talking about, right? Like tax returns, welfare, child benefit, right? <laughs> right. So somebody must tell him afterwards, inshallah. Okay. Tax returns, welfare, child benefit. Child benefit is for the child or for you? Is it? For you. For you. Right. The government is giving you finances to take care of your child. Okay. So it's coming into your ownership. It's not going for the child's ownership. Right. So you are going to pay the zakat on it. Okay. Yes. If, if sometime somebody, if somebody does give to the ch children, then that's theirs. And as we have discussed, not zakatable for you. Right. Only when they become valid. If someone is makroot and he's saving money to pay off his loan, is it also zakatable? Absolutely zakatable. But because you have cars as well, yeah. liability, that's going to eat up the uh, your saving anyway. Yeah. Right? As we're going to discuss. Because all, you're going to add all this up and then you're going to subtract your loans out of it. Okay. Right? So it's going to reconcile in the end. The cars that we give for it? Uh, cars. Yeah, normal cars. Yeah. yeah so it has to be included within our um, uh, it, it, it is receivable and, and uh, our next discussion is going to be entirely about that inshallah so right now if any, any other questions you have you can you can fire away inshallah uh, I want to ask about the family uh, mm -hmm. where for example wife or kids receive something mm -hmm. uh, from her parents mm -hmm. and then like what how do we distinct like is that kids for, uh, uh, for the for the kids we have explained yeah. right yeah. for uh, for wife remember that many uh, we have a misconception within our um, places that husband and wife are one right the two have become one no way uh, business is business and a cup of tea is a cup of tea right when it comes to finances when it comes to money right your wife is separate, husband is separate. Even though the love and everything, my, my darling, my this and that, we'll, we'll have a joint account, right? Even in a joint account, it's nothing joint. You have to make an assessment what portion of it is hers and what portion is yours. So both will be calculating their zakat calculation completely independently. Yeah, there could be, there could be um, commodities or there could be assets which you jointly own. Right, a new house uh, was owned, uh, built up, and you put money into it and everything, and now it's rented out. And it's in both people's name, right? Jointly owned. So fine, that's nothing wrong with it. But you need to make your calculation accordingly. Fifty percent is for the uh, that side, and fifty percent is for that side. Mm -hmm. Unless there is a different um, uh, profit, a, a different share ratio that that uh, um, uh, you tell your wife, uh, sixty percent is yours and forty percent is mine. That that needs to be done. In, in, in every asset, right? Our our fuqaha and our kabini, they, they were very particular about this. 
even even household items and everything in your lifetime make sure um, that it's clear for yourself and for your wife what 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 belongs to who so the, so after the khuda na khwasa god forbid uh, the separation or the divorce does take place if you have these kind of uh, documentation that we have already divided the assets out right then the uh, uh, issue of like 50% going here and there right you can always circumvent by a good lawyer that no no by by their dis- own decision they have made sure that this belongs to me right so like generally the man takes care of the family so in terms of uh, responsibility both have their own responsibilities so man will be questioned for not asking what you will not be questioned about why did you not pay for her zakat you will be questioned about why did you not teach her that she has to pay zakat okay now that does not mean that you you don't pay zakat for her be the good good person be the better husband and do calculate all that and dispense the zakat from your jointness and uh, whatever you can pay on her behalf that sharia is not stopping from you but you are not liable to pay on her behalf uh, about the lands i want to ask about so about the intention Mm. So let's say this year we want to sell the land, for example. Ji. So we have an intention; it's all also listed in the market. Was it purchased with the intention? That's what. That's the first question. Okay. Okay. Not if, initially. Right. So if it was not initially purchased with that intention, now your intention has changed, right? It still is not zakatable. Okay. Uh, you you will wait until it's actually sold. The deal is done. The uh, receivable are going to become zakatable. Ji. Yes, exactly. That's that's always the case. Uh, you will always look and on the day of your calculation, what is receivable at that time, okay. right? And when we when we are going to start discussing small expenses, uh, small expenses and small liabilities, the same thing will be applied. We are going to look at that particular day. Yes, sir. you had your hand raised it's okay uh was there any denomination for a uh, collector item sorry collector item right a collector item is on no uh, only time the uh, a collector item is going to become zakatable if it is gold or silver right or if uh, again if it is uh, used to uh, I mean, it's being sold out other than that i mean is, collector item is your desire I mean, uh, you, it's mentioned. So, if it's only collector item, if it is actually gold or silver, mm. or if it's not, if it's something else. Yeah, let's so assume a personal dish. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Would that be considered a collector item? You have to calculate the value of that. If you no, it. no, no. It's not zakatable. If you sell it, the income will be zakatable. Yeah. Yeah. So, it is about the uh, the gold. So, if you don't have access to gold, which you are. Hmm. So, uh, uh, give me a scenario. Why would you not have? It's not here. Like for example, it's back then. Mm-hmm. The bank last time we did, but it's never voided. Mm. So is it like so? You can make an intention. Okay, when are you gonna get there? You do the actual math. But right. Is it possible that you do an estimation on a paper and then? Based on that, absolutely, know. absolutely, you can do it, and uh, there is a complete uh, dispensation for you to pay out the z- zakat uh, upfront, right? Yeah, you, uh, as long as your paperwork is complete, your ledgers are complete. When you are actually going to reconcile, uh, it's going to match up. It's not a problem. Okay. Okay. G. So, if the child benefit that's coming uh, from the government, his wife is the owner of. Okay. she can pay from any money that she has as long as it's her possession okay now um uh, this question is normally brought up in uh, fiqh terminology why uh, why do you always say that if it's a gold you have to pay pay the zakat from gold who's going to sell out the gold just to pay the zakat 
right so example is mentioned in the fiqh books if a person has a necklace that has a 40 chains 40 uh, pieces within it right and it forms a full chain then um, then out of that uh, you are going to when the zakat time comes and it is uh, more than nisab you will have to take one part of it out and give it in zakat or you pay equivalent money from it now where you get that money from does not matter right you can you can sell other commodities that you have so you can sell the dishes you have you can sell your furniture whatever whatever you want to do right but you uh, you'll give the uh, the equal if no then you have to sell the same item to get, to cover it up right many people say that oh but it's the jewelry you know i'm, I'm keeping in safety deposit and this and that it belongs to my grand grand grandmother it does not matter if you don't have any other money sell the jewelry or sell the portion of the jewelry to pay out the zakat is an ibadah that that is made obligatory upon you right so find an, a, another way once you are pushed into the corner you will always find another way okay, so what i'm doing in my case mm -hmm. like because uh, my wife has jewelry so like she she's not selling any jewelry but i am paying the zakat for her jewelry mm -hmm. but uh, she is getting the child uh, benefit, benefit on mm -hmm. that and then i'm paying zakat for that also mm -hmm. so I don't know. Like mm. If she, if, yeah, if she wants, she can pay from the child benefit. She can uh, pay and then whatever the rest is still, if it's zakatable, then she, she needs to pay the zakat from that for that money too, right? It, uh, she can pay from any money that she has. So ch if the child benefit money is in her hand, it's hers money. It was supposed to be for the children uh, benefit and everything, right? So you take care of the children. Let her pay from that. Mm. I mean, uh, in the end, it's going to be a work around. Again, we as we as we said, we are not going to look at every income that comes in, whether that income stays with you for one year or not. This is why we 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 made the day one and the day uh, 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 last day, right? If if the child benefit came, let's say um, uh, uh, in the beginning of the month, uh, and your uh, calculation date is twentieth of the month, in the twenty days, if you have already spent the child benefit, right? Then in the calculation, the child benefit will not come, right? Whatever is left from the child benefit, you will add in there. Okay, let's continue. Now the next uh, next discussion that we was uh, going to have is with regards to the receivable assets. Receivable assets. Understand that uh, depending on the faqih that you're going to speak to, you may uh, you may find them categorization slightly differently. Uh, some will say that there are three types of uh, receivables. Some uh, others will say there are four types of receivables. So uh, whenever we discuss now the um, the strongest de uh, debt receivable strongest de debt receivable is when you forward loans or credit or on items uh, that you are dealing with buying and selling and everything and uh, you uh, you sold an item and you have to get some money in lieu of it now that that money is is receivable for you right that's the strongest one and uh, in, in this one is zakatable asset and you are going to calculate zakat upon it or add it to the zakatable asset listing okay then there is an intermediate intermediate level of debt receivable uh, this is a debt from non merchandise like a house or a land or anything now imagine if you, you sold the house you're not going to get the entire money tomorrow right it's going to take some time so, but your calculation is now here so now, now you, um, if you are if you are uh, selling the house for 400000 and you you are calculating the day after the, uh, suddenly 400,000 you have to calculate the entire 2.5% uh, on it and uh, give it out <coughs> so in this particular case then the fuqah have mentioned zakatable asset for the creditor from the time of sale whenever the sale took place it is zakatable however wajib uh, the, the wujub of actually dispensing it will come about once you have possession over it right so this is this is the kind of a uh, one where where once you have the money now you have sufficient means of selling it uh, uh, dispensing the zakat as well right so here here uh, um, uh, sharia makes it easier easier for you but uh, you will have to pay for the previous portion pre previous time in case let's assume that you sell the house for 400000 and uh, the money did not come to you until 2 years 
right after two years the guy said like we here, here you go for 400,000 now you have to pay zakat for the two years because it, it was still receivable right so you calculate the zakat from the time of the sale but you pay it at that time right keep keep this in mind because this is going to come in play uh, in a uh, in, uh, in use discussion when we're talking about rrsp okay now the next one is a weak debt receivable something that's weak now that debt that comes from uh, comes from non exchange transaction unpaid wages i mean it's uh, your calculation is uh, 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 supposed to be like on on first of the month and normally you get your wages on the second right so on the first of the month a receivable is still there but you haven't received it as yet so you're waiting for it unpaid wages unpaid rental income mahar receivable aayega to aayega the the poor wife keeps on waiting for 20 years waiting for the but some people keep on paying a little bit right they have made a schedule so in that case you are you are anticipating the mahar to come right the ruling is only zakatable upon receipt and no zakat for the past years in that case got it right now the, the, uh, the, these would be like a, a, imagine the wife is waiting 15 years for the mahar right and the, uh, and it's uh, the mahar was like uh, $2000 5 years ago right and now she received it and now she has to pay 5 years worth of uh, uh, zakat on it so she's going to be left with <laughs> says, are you joking with me <laughs> so so uh, uh, I mean, this is the weak debt. That's why no no zakat payment for the previous one. Uh, only when you get the possession of it, then you're gonna add it into that that year's uh, zakat bill asset if you have at that time. And the finally, you have something called bad debt, right? And we feel that almost all our debts are bad debts. <laughs> never they never come back to us, right? So and uh, it's been ten years. You've been telling the person, please give it back, please give it back, and now you would have lost hope in it. So there there is a distinction that the fuqaha then make. The debtor, the person who has taken the loan from you, he acknowledges, no, no, bhai, uh, uncle Mabu, I, I I completely agree. Yes, I took from you, right? But I I haven't given. So if he acknowledges, then Uncle Mabu still has to pay zakat on it, <laughs> right? But but creditor is not able to recover it, then it's a not zakatable. Even though the person acknowledges, but we know the person is now muffless. He has no way of doing it. And Uncle Mabu has tried all the means even gone to the big sheikh and the big muftis and everyone everyone spoke to him right uh, 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 tried to go to the uh, to the government or the law and everything and they said the guy is bankrupt right he can't pay you he's he's he's, uh, he's liquidated now right so then in that case not zakatable it's gone then after that debtor denies okay now debtor denies that you ever give me any any kind of loan then in that case uh, do you have alternate ways of getting that? Do you have a certain uh, proof, receipts and everything that you can use? If you have them, you're going to use and get it back. Then it, you'll pay zakat on it. But if you haven't, if you, there's no other way, recourse or anything like that, then the only way is that it's, it's a bad debt gone, that you can't really do anything about it. Right? Inshallah, the equivalent you will receive in the Akhara. Yes. Also, welcome the, uh, the Hassan. Yes. Mm. My question would be, what's the difference between Karzi Hasna and non Karzi Hasna? No, like for example, you give it to someone with, uh, with the in, like, with the, in, yeah, with, with, what condition would you put with it? Mm. Right? Uh, we spoke about in one of the classes as well, there is no Karzi Hasna in Islam. Right? Karzi Hasna, when it comes in the Quran and everything, it, it, it talks about giving Karzi Hasna to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning you will spend in path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? But when we talk about individual in between us, the our concept of Karzi Hasna is not there in Islam. That that I am giving you Qaz whenever you are able to pay, pay. Every Qaz can be sought after. You can tell the person, I gave you the Qaz last year, right? I told you whenever you can pay, pay, but I need it now. Right? It's still my money. Please give it to me now. Right? So you can, you can demand for it and it's a receivable. Then you'll find out like, oh no, Karzi Hasna means bad debt. <laughs> as as uh, Sheikh Mahmood would tell me, Karz deke? Hasna. <laughs> right. So 
that was all in the assets side right now let's talk about a little bit about the the uh, deductibles liabilities now alhamdulillah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has realized that when you have uh, uh, you have to pay zakat on so many assets then if you have to pay out to somebody right those those kind of liabilities are burden upon your shoulder they can be deducted away as well right so just as the assets and receivables are zakatable liabilities and payables are not zakatable meaning not only that they are not zakatable they are zakat deductible right they they will take away from the the, the zakat amount in practice we will gather all our zakatable assets and then remove from it all our deductibles this means that we can add up all the deductibles and subtract from the zakatable asset and get the net zakatable asset so this process if you follow then it will be much easier for you to calculate your entire zakat otherwise if you want to follow the more uh, classical and the traditional method then every different nisab gold silver goats a camel uh, uh, all these all will have to be separated and you will have to find a, a valuation of all of them and deduct any liabilities in all of them and then uh, come uh, pay out separately in the end it's going to come down to the same thing there will be some some, some different uh, differences available because you're accumulating them together some there will be some overlap or uh, less overlap i always say when you calculate the zakat to be paid out in the end pay a little bit extra from your own end it's not going to give you trouble it's going to become sadaqa on your shoulder or it, even even if you don't establish it as a sadaqa you have the intention that if it is additional payment i'm doing let it go, follow flow into the next year right so it will always give you more security but this and for our terms with so many different kind of assets and liabilities this becomes easier when we talk about liabilities we normally divide the liabilities into two portions so that we can we, it becomes easier to understand short term liability are debts and liabilities to be paid under 12 months okay remember when we uh, uh, when the zakat become a wajib hawlan hawl completion of the one year that's why that portion is being mentioned right 12 months one year right uh, so if it is being uh, going to be uh, paid out within the 12, 12 months then it's an immediate uh, liability that you need to get rid of so on the day of the calculation of the zakat if you have a liability a debt that needs to be paid out within the next 12 months you can subtract it from your net zakatable assets expenses which have been billed and are outstanding at the time of calculation you uh, uh, it's first of your month the, uh, uh, it's the date of your calculation now you find out there is a bill sitting there that, uh, from epcor or there is a bill sitting there from an inter internet uh, company that you have to pay them 75 dollars or 112 dollars or whatever uh, uh, amount right now they have sorted from you so it, this is called dain al mutahaqqaq right it's it's a debt that you ha actually have to pay it's uh, brought upon you it's not like oh next month they are also going to ask the same uh, 75 dollars right so you you're not going to minus that amount you're going to minus the amount that has become mutahaqqaq upon you okay payable for the uh, for uh, for uh, payable for goods for which you have taken possession and not yet paid right you bought something and you still have to pay for it so you have to pay right away it's not like you're going to pay next year right so that that will be deducted as well any liability which is currently and actively due upon you so, uh, sort from you then you can actually subtract it from there as well right this is short term liability when it becomes to long term liability which spans over more than the 12 months then you are only allowed to utilize 12 months level of pay payments and liabilities okay mortgage payments are normally for 20 years but you can subtract one year's payment from there okay there are some more stricter scholars who who say even in mortgage payment you only subtract what's become mutahaqqaq upon your shoulders established upon your shoulder that is this this month's payment and not the uh, other ones right but uh, mufti taqi usmani sahib says like uh, although there is dispensation and scope for it uh, one year is a good balance commercial loans credits uh, to uh, to be paid within the 12 months now normally uh, when you are um, buying and selling uh, normally there is a 3 month credit or 9 month credit or 6 month 
credit you don't actually make all the payments right away right so if if the industry is like that and you have that that kind of a credit that you have to pay out that will be deductible but remember because on one side the, you have these deductibles on the other side when you are uh, when you have receivables that's also going to be receivable in the next 3 months or 6 months so uh, overall it's going to balance out reconcile with themselves as well for a person who is sitting in a business and actually carrying out these transaction it's not really difficult for you to make an assessment what is the overall net and net liability or net receivable for myself right it it becomes a part of your yearly calculation anyway and then a long term uh, liability could also include your uh, personal loans sought from uh, others due to paid in the coming year i'm saying a uh, coming year because if it's not coming year the chances are is going to go into those bad debts or the uh, the, the, the the weak weak um, receivables right but if it is something that that is coming up in the next year then it's going to be in, included in the uh, uh, long term liability that you can use as a deductible right the yeah. if i'm considering as a fast today mm. and if i'm using like credit card for paying my grocery and bills and this and that yeah. and so should i check like what i have to pay and this is like my yeah. store yeah because pay. because credit card is a loan to you right so the, if it's on the this particular day yes credit card loan is something that you are sought from and any time you log in they say like oh payable hai. you have to pay living your life on a credit card is a dangerous road eh? right next section that let's talk about shares we already spoke about that being a partner in a in a particular business or a company or anything is just like owning shares right now uh, understand just because we're discussing with the shares does not mean i am of the view that the shares are permissible right it is a common practice it is a ta'amul of the people a customary custom practice um, but there is a niche sco scholar small group of scholars who maintain that there is not sufficient evidence that a person who has share holding of a particular company if you if you have uh, let's say 1000 shares in microsoft does not actually make you an owner of 1000 1000 that 1000 portion of their uh, company no it's it only provides you the the right of getting the dividends from them right so but uh, mufti taqi usmani sahab and other other uh, uh, high level muftiyan they have the opinion that it is permissible it is constructive possession uh, of of the shareholding within the company so we are discussing for those who are utilizing the shares and everything shares will be purchased with the two purpose as well either they're going to be purchased as a commodity within themselves to to resell them right you buy the share you sell them make a profit okay if you are doing that then uh, you all the stock value is going to be zakatable all the dividends are going to be zakatable because it's all stock and trade okay so uh, or you can uh, you can purchase a stock to hold right you're not going to buy a stock in let's say oracle or uh, cisco or microsoft or anything so that you uh, you can wait 3 days to sell it right those those these stocks they they increase on a uh, on a long term basis right so when you buy stocks in them you buy to hold for the next 5 years or 10 years where they will be, make the splits where they are going to do all that so that so that your capital is going to increase and they are going to uh, on a yearly level uh, issue out dividends for the preferred shares or the, or common shares whichever way and you are going to make money out of that so that is the purpose of buying those particular shares if you are purchase the st uh, stocks to uh, to purchase to hold them and benefit from the dividends then in this case total dividends received will be zakatable okay but this is the kicker you will have to analyze the business to assess the zakatable assets because when you when you purchase a share for the long term you are partner in it just like the business we talked about right and because it's a, it's a business we talked about uh, you are partner in it now you need to figure out how much of the business of that particular business is actually zakatable asset and how much is not ah i just made shares really difficult theek hai right so let's deep dive into that what do we have to analyze in a business okay what is zakatable and what is not zakatable mr a invests 10000 dollars into a business now at the time of calculating the zakat business assets can be divided into fixed assets building land machinery non uh, these are all non zakatable right on the other hand 
the business also has current assets receivables stock and trade and these are all going to be zakatable assume that 60 percent of the business is actually all these receivables and stock and trade and all these things right and the rest is the <coughs> fixed asset that that is not zakatable so out of this uh, uh, 60 60 percent the business also has along with it payables right it's not it's not just we are going to take the 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 receivables and everything the, you are still because you are a partner in the business you are also liable to pay out the loans of that business too equally according to the ratio so you, you are going to deduct the payables liabilities which are not zakatable assume that they are 10 percent right 60 minus 10 50 percent that means 50 percent of the assets of that particular business are actually zakatable assets right so why why does that help us it helps us because you put in ten thousand dollars how much of it ten thousand dollars is representing that fifty percent of zakatable asset five thousand dollars right the remaining five thousand went into towards the fixed assets and uh, liabilities and everything so you uh, for you to calculate your zakat you're going to utilize that fifty percent uh, area uh, there's five thousand <clears throat> Mr. A will add this 5,000 from the business along with any dividends the business is providing over to add into the zakatable assets in, of his personal collection. Remember that we also talked about assuming that this business is also carrying out their own zakat calculations. In Pakistan, many many uh, organizations, they do it and they tell their shareholders, and, and, congratulations, we have dispensed the zakat on your behalf. Right? But and so you have to reconcile, okay, I don't have to count these uh, particular uh, things in my zakat calculation. But if they don't, then you have to add them into your calculation to, so you can pay out the zakat. All these information about the business and everything, they, uh, they, are, uh, they are supposed to be transparent. They are available in the uh, annual, annual um, financial uh, reports, balance sheets and all those things. Right? So you can uh, figure them out. In, in fact, please remember uh, most of the information the, uh, are in the, the, uh, the uh, year end uh, balance sheets and accounting statements and everything, even for the banks and all those things. So many, many a times I used to I used to talk to people and I tell them you have to figure out how much percentage of the bank is actually into riba, right? Uh, uh, is haram and everything. They say, oh, it's all haram. I said, have you ever seen a balance sheet? Most of their holding is sitting right there in uh, in those. So they, uh, there is a there is a small chunk that is actually in the riba business, especially with credit unions, right? Those those that are not really multi level corporations or anything. The smaller credit unions, it is quite possible that they may not be in, uh, majorly riba based um, uh, bank. Why is that necessary? It's a different a different question you can ask because when you're do, uh, conducting an employment, right, you need to know whether the majority income of the, uh, the particular credit union or a business is riba based or not. If it is, then you cannot work there, right? If it, uh, if it is not, then there is gunjaish, there is scope that you can still work there provided your actual uh, 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 transaction of work is not uh, uh, helping out the riba. Okay. All right. That being said, now this what this means is if you are um, buying a portfolio or a mutual fund or something like that, what is that? That's multiple different companies within one group, and you are buying into that. So your job has just increased that much that you have to now find out and analyze all the companies that are in that mutual fund to figure out whether uh, uh, how much is uh, zakat you have to pay out what uh, what portion is zakatable and not zakat easy way out and and a, and a very expensive way out is consider everything to be zakatable and pay it out right but uh, but obviously if if your um, securities and your holdings are in millions right you can't really do that you you better make this assessment and go go through it and also your due diligence is going to be that uh, have to realize sometimes you just can't do it right so find some scholars or find some someone who is uh, has aptitude for it and hire them to do it right we hire the lawyers and the accountants to do things right some sometimes uh, give give the molvi people a little bit of the money as well to do it okay and there are many many organizations mashallah that are doing all these things <clears throat> yes well, since we're talking about the last one so this only applies if it's a long-term yes yes if it's a short term if it's bought to resell yeah. 
then the market value. Th then yeah, the entire thing. So just adding to that, so this is only done when you sell the stock, not when you hold it. Uh, which ones? Uh, in this. Uh, in the long term ones? Yeah. Um, no, in the long term ones, you are becoming a partner in the company. Right, so you you have to. Uh, that's why you are you doing the anal analysis to see how much of the uh, assets of that company are zakatable assets, and you have to pay a, a yearly level, add it into your uh, zakat calculation, because you're not buying these shares to sell. Right. It's it, the value is not coming from their sale price. The value is coming from their own capital uh, in themselves and the dividends that they are providing. Zakat on CPP and RRSP. Okay, understand the difference between the CPP and RRSP. CPP is a pension plan designed by the government. It's a mandated plan in which you have no choice whatsoever. Okay, if you are working, you are paying for CPP and you are not paying, the government is taking. Right? And this is the this is the, the essential difference that you have to keep in mind because it's mandated. Even when you receive your pay stub, it says that it, it's already been taken away from your wages. It never came into your possession. So it is as though the, uh, the government has snatched it away from you, made a hasab of the item from you or your, your wages before the wages could come to you, right? And from a fiqhi perspective, the company that you are working for, the employer still owes you that wage, right? It's still wages that are owned to you but because it's been taken away by the government right and then they go and they invest it over the long period of time and everything and whatever comes out after your uh, you reach 65 years and they start to give you tell you like oh you can have this annuity or you can have the perpetuity uh, how do you want to get your pensions back right so in this case the these are not zakatable simply because they never came into your possession you don't have access to them. You cannot get them, right? So they, they are not zakatable for you. Moreover, <clears throat> one will not calculate. Once you receive it, okay, you will not uh, calculate the zakat for the previous years. This is only for the CPP, right? Why? Because it's something that was, that was yours, never came to you, only came to you after 65 years. Okay. At that time, you're, uh, it's going to have a portion of the original wage that you were supposed to get and plus profits that the government has made on it. All the profits are not riba for you, they are gift for you because the, you never put it in, right? You never put, uh, you, you never uh, volunteered that take my money and do it. So it's a tabarro from, from their side that they are giving. Again, this is only for the CPP, okay? When we come to RRSP, it's slightly different now. RRSP is not a mandatory uh, pension plan. It's a voluntary pension plan. And so you are telling from your own end, yes, I am entering into that this pension plan. Take money from my wages. Okay. So now you are investing from your wages into it, which also means you need to know where the RRSP is being invested because you cannot invest in haram. So you need to tell your RRSP uh, consultant or a lawyer that I can only invest in these these these, these places, right? And now, understand this. One is going to be your contribution towards RRSP, right? That's your investment, so you have to pay zakat. While calculating on yearly basis, however, you will add your contributions to date, right? Up till now, how much I have contributed, and you're going to give the zakat of that. You can, if you want, you can choose and wait until you uh, re recover the entire RSP and then pay all the back, right? It's, it's, uh, result is going to be the same, but it's going to be much difficult for you to actually get a chunk of the money and then big, pay a big chunk of it in zakat, right? So keep on, keep on paying through, uh, throughout your years. But that being said, once one takes possession of the contribution of zakat will be due for the past year as well employer's contribution now employer's contribution is how does rrsp work i put hundred dollars employee employer employer is going to put hundred dollars okay that's an incentive for them to keep you as an employee we you enter into the rrsp you put hundred dollars towards it every time every month i will put hundred dollars from my side right and whatever i am giving you 
after 60 years or after 40 years of employment it's all yours and the rewards uh, the, uh, the whatever is going to uh, uh, earn that's all yours as well so employers contribution towards one's rsp are not sakatiba because they're not yours right they were never your possession so one, uh, only once they come and in your possession they will be treated as zakatable with no accruals from the past years as well because it's still coming out to you as the borrow the your contribution is zakatable and for the all the years okay yes so, the tpp is, is like for everyone but for some uh, government uh, uh, i think non government also employee uh, for for my example, the PSPP is also doing this pension plan for uh, government of the world, mm -hmm. and that also took out before. Uh, and, 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 and I don't know about how the PSPP works, right? But usul will remain the same okay. if it is being taken, regardless of your volition or non volition, mm -hmm. right? Jabran, it's been taken away. Yeah. Then it will be treated like the CPP I have mentioned. So whatever the interest they are giving, the early interest like they are giving, in, in, so that is not interest. No, it's not going to be interest. It's going to be the borrow because it's not yours, right? They they can choose to say no. Don't you're not get, going to get interest, mm -hmm. right? Let's come to the last leg of uh, uh, zakat, and that is dispensing the zakat, giving out the zakat. Up until now, we were discussing only what will be calculated, how it will be calculated. Now we will be talking about how we're going to figure out the avenues and where to dispense it. Recalling the, ji, so okay. No, this one uh, now it's uh, giving is easy. <laughs> it's it's difficult to to earn, <laughs> very easy to spend. <laughs> Okay, recalling the Shari definition of zakat. Remember the very first definition: it is vital that the ownership is transferred. Ownership must transfer. Okay, <clears throat> many of the contemporary scholars you will find they will tell you, oh, you can give zakat in this avenue and that avenue and this avenue and that. Avenue. Apply this litmus test: is the ownership being transferred or not? If it's not being transferred, then uh, the uh, there, there there is some level of ijtihad being applied. Right, just because we live in a such a uh, environment that oh, it's not same as the uh, what what was before. We need the zakat money, right? Right. So the dispenser must either be the zakat payer himself or an agent for the zakat payer. Okay. So if I ask um, uh, Mulan Rizwan, please, uh, this this is my zakat money. Go and dispense it into the rightful avenue. I may not be so astute and so up to date. Maybe where the people are needy. Who is the Kath eligible, right? Mulana may be more a PR person and knows and knows more, more families. So if I give him, please dispense it in the rightful avenue. I am making him vakil on my behalf to go and dispense it. He can do it definitely, right? And um, so and his, his doing would be like like as if my hand is doing, it, right? Provided uh, I have conviction that he can do it and he knows he can do it as well. If he turns out to be uh, not the best person and he doesn't do his due diligence, then he will be liable in sight of Allah SWT, right? I will not be questioned about it because I relied on his competence. Okay. No, nothing against Mulana. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you are like saying you can give the government to Mulana and you can give him Oh, just ask him, him. ask him, ask him. <laughs> recipient, recipient must be in a valid Shara'i avenue for zakat. We're going to discuss all those avenues in the next slide. It cannot be a fictional entity, right? It cannot be a fictional entity like people come up with saying like, oh, this account, this bank account is being used for dispensing zakat. So you just put it in there. No has to be an actual entity, actual person that you are giving, handing over the, the zakat monies to. The recipient must have ownership over the zakat monies with ability to make the sarraf within it. Right? The meaning, the uh, if the recipient receives the zakat, not only monies or in, even in kind, he, the recipient is willing to, or uh, able to do whatever they want to do with it. Right? The question will always comes, and uh, probably inshallah we'll discuss later on what happens in all these organizations and the and the madaris and everything. How how do we go about doing that, right? But let's look at what the Quran mentioned. Who are these uh, these avenues? 
The first two are joined together, poor and needy. Lil fuqara'i wal masakin. Poor and needy. These are those who never come up to the level of the sahib nisa. They have less than the nisa. So they are, they are majority percent of people who are going to be receiving these uh, zakats. Then there are those who are debtors, meaning they have they are uh, uh, madhyun. They have a lot of debts on them, so much that it's consuming up all their assets, their zakatable assets and everything, and they're still in the debts, right? So they are a viable uh, uh, place to give out zakat to. Uh, a side point. Uh, student loans and everything right if if a, if there are in within a community there are students who are uh, who have these debts of student loans which they have to pay within five years or they have the grace period to pay right and they are earning they have started to earn but they still cannot uh, match up all their student loan they are within these debtors so they can accept zakat okay even though they may be mashallah wearing nice clothes and everything that does not matter Right. Still, the, uh, uh, the zakat monies can be diverted over them, and that's a very good way of actually f uh, first making sure that they are genuine. Right. That they are really uh, uh, their debts are overpowering everything. So pay off their debts, make them stand on their feet, so that they can become the payable or uh, uh, good community members to help the communities out. Right. Uh, I, I even mentioned at, at one time you can devise methodologies around it that that uh, uh, these zakat monies can be utilized for them and uh, you can encourage them that they in the next 10 years, 15 years, whatever trade or skill that they are learning, that they're going to use it for the betterment of the community, build the build the manpower with a, sk a skill set and everything right by helping them out right now with the financial needs and everything. It can be done, but it's just that um, somebody like me, I don't want to take the risk with it. So some, somebody much more uh, well-grounded uh, organization or somebody will have to do. Okay. <clears throat> Third is the travelers. Ah, oh, easy. I would travel. Every... Dunya ek safar hai. <laughs> <laughs> right? We are travelers in this world, man. So we can... zakat is all ours. No. These are referring to the travelers who are traveling away from their destinations or their source such that they are disconnected from the entire world and they don't have uh, access to their money now, right? So they are uh, in power. Now think about it. Somebody going for Hajj, right? And gets looted. He doesn't have any money. Fine, he did not get his Hajj. But now you tell him that oh, uh, uh, the, the Zakat money is also not uh, haram for you. Right, so he is going to say like, man, this this religion has completely destroyed me and has stranded me in the road. But religion has kept kept in mind. No, such a person could be in the need of it. And people who are Muslims around, they should help out with this individual to make sure that he gets back to his and uh, home so that he can rebuild his uh, life and everything. Right, or make him help him to reach his destination. Similarly, fi <coughs> sabilillah. Not the tabligh jamaada. Fi sabilillah, the mujahideen. Because they they cut off everything and they go in fi sabilillah. And many a times it happens that because they are in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they don't have anything to live by. And because they don't have anything, it could be that they they die of hunger and everything. So better that uh, they can go with the, for the zakat money that will help them fortify their azam that they are spending their, their actual life in the path of Allah SWT. okay next is zakat calculators totally abused right zakat calculators here is being referred to uh, the, uh, those sanctioned by the government or the khulafa right the, uh, the khalifa has sanctioned them to collect the zakat so thereafter once once they are uh, collecting the zakat now from the zakat monies their wages can be paid out Okay. Not the way that we mentioned that the, you collecting the zakat and you get a, per, a percentage commission out of it. No, not like that. And nowadays, that's what pe people use. So the person, uh, he wants to collect more and more zakat. Why? Because his commission is more. Right. That, 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 that's, not the, that's not the correct way. Uh, these, these collectors are employees by the Khalifa. They, they are not freelance or uh, partners in, in uh, collecting. Right, they are employees and they are paid wages. And the wages, yes, you can you can pay from the uh, the zakat monies. Uh, and that also, let me also mention, 
uh, if an organization is running a zakat collection right just because the organization is running a zakat collection does not mean that the entire organization is now zakat collectors no these are individuals who are employees right so individuals who go house to house and everything to collect for zakat and everything uh, provided they have a mandate of giving it out to the uh, to the uh, rightful avenues as well a, a masjid making a zakat box right just like that or a masjid opening a zakat account in the bank they need to have somebody behind them who is eligible to receive the zakat because none of them are eligible to receive zakat right so in these cases as as uh, probably is going to come in one of the frequently asked question as well that they become agent of the dispensers right so if i give zakat to by aziz can be mashallah your uh, uh, masjid person please give it out now it doesn't mean my zakat is fulfilled it means bhai aziz is sitting with my zakat as my wakil to dispense it in the right uh, avenue and if it takes him 8 months to find the right avenue my zakat will be delayed 8 months okay which is why these zakat uh, these zakat organizations who are specifically designed for it they always have people behind there who are waiting for zakat they make them the wakil to collect right and that's where the dispensation gets done as soon as you give it to them okay finally is mu'allafat al-qulub mashallah big bar for them right <clears throat> sayyidina umar radhiyallahu ta'ala uh, he sanctioned that no, no more zakat for the mu'allafat al-qulub mu'allafat al-qulub is uh, the, those people who get gain the ulfa the, the 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 softness of their heart towards coming to deen so these are specific for non muslims who are on the edge of becoming muslim right so if you help them financially they will decide to come back now sayyidina umar radhiyallahu anhu in his time according to his uh, uh, his uh, and, uh, demographics and everything he said like this this one does not fit anymore simply because everybody is a muslim around now right but some scholars now they they do mention when we uh, come into these western areas where where they they may be uh, um, non muslims who who are just about to convert they just need that final nudge and that final nudge could be you helping them financially a little bit right if that's the case then this is the, this is the place where you help them out you make them the owner of the zakat amount and uh, and then you make targhib you know uh, you you remain within the muslims you will you will uh, uh, like as an ukhuwa as a brotherhood will always be taking care of you as well right and and they can come in because once they come in they they are eligible for zakat right so they will come under poor needy or debtors or any anything like that so they they, they still could take benefit of the money for a little while until they become standing on the feet our purpose is not to make an ummah of completely uh, dependent on other people's money rather to utilize that money and encourage them to make, stand on their own feet so that they can help others out yes جسٹ بیکاز سم بڈی از اے ڈیٹر ڈونٹ ڈونٹ رول دم آؤٹ آف پور نیڈی بیکاز بیکاز دا ڈیٹرز ہو آر لوور دین نساب بیکاز دا ڈیٹ از گوئنگ ٹو کور اپ آل دیٹ سو دے ول بی Yeah. But if they are in Sahib Inisab. They, they, they will be Sahib Inisab. They will not be Sahib Inisab because, because of the debt. Because of the debt. Yeah. Alright. Uh, sorry to... Ji. But you said that long-term debts are not uh, considered as a payable. So how that is going to work? No, no. The, the, these debts are that he is being asked about. Yeah, but you give an example of a student who is going to pay for five years. Like right. Right. Right, so I, I, even even he he can make uh, his first year payments right as as a deductible so you are calculating for yeah 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 okay incorrect avenues for zakat welfare projects with no tamleek or ownership takes place i guess that was one of the questions right so hospitals madrasas masajid the centers all these places there is no actual uh, ownership being taken from for that zakat amount of money there are uh, there are ways of circumventing this a little bit right but uh, the purpose of zakat is not to circumvent and everything when there is a need uh, in a community then then we will give them the uh, the way out right normally we don't have 
and so the, so madaris and masajid and everything they they should be run on, not on zakat but on lilla on the sadaqat on the good money because remember the, if, if the mushrikeen of makka they didn't choose to put a haram money into the kaaba right we, we can at least do that much that our masajid should be filled with our good money right so that's that, it's not it's not the way it's, it doesn't behove a good muslim organization to find loopholes and everything just to hold on to monies then we talked about uh, progeny of the Hashmiites. Uh, another thing is any any Sharan rich person, one who uh, one having net zakatable more than the nisab, right? So you cannot dispense over there. Direct spouse, your spouse, you cannot dispense zakat to. Okay. Uh, one of the reason is because the spouse is going to you are going to eat back from that the money that you are spending on the spouse, right? So can be dispensed to ex spouse, right? can be dispensed to the ex-spouse uh, if, if she is sharan poor. Well, if you do that, mashallah, you'll become a waliullah. <laughs> okay. So, usul is, right? Now, the usuls uh, you cannot spend into. For example, parents, grandparents, right? Similarly, furus you can't. Kids, grandkids, you cannot do, right? But no, no, nothing is stopping you from helping out the, uh, the, the side persons, your brothers, your sisters. Right? them you can give if they are they are eligible for zakat right and you will get double the reward because you are helping them out monetarily and you are you are making sila rahmi with them as well yes right Norm normally in the, the fatwa that is given in not to give uh, somebody so much nisab that they become sahib nisab themselves right there are two issues with that uh, from a fakhi terms. Number one, we can still adopt for the uh, gold nisab, right? So that would be 5,700. That's considerable to help somebody out in a, in, in a very rough patch. N num number two, um, just becoming sahib and nisab does not impose any wujub upon them anyway, right? They still have to wait, wait for the halal and all. So uh, yes, while it is not a recommendation, but uh, still if you do give a, a, a little bit extra over there, in, especially in our environment where the overhead costs are so much that literally the overheads will, will cover up the silver nisab, right? Then uh, we, we shouldn't get stuck onto it that, that oh no, the awla is that uh, you don't give that, that much. Uh, if Once you have, uh, well, you know, you, you won't find many people genuine enough to receive the zakat. Once you find it, then Alhamdulillah, make Alhamdulillah and help them out. Right, so you, uh, at least you, you'll uh, cl uh, clear your own account. How much we can like, delay to dispense like our zakat? If we, for example, if, uh, if I calculate the zakat in Ramadan, mm. and uh, if I'm paying, like helping to my friend, and then uh, he also knows like, okay, I, I take my zakat in Ramadan, so might be, it, it will like be, Feel hurt or something like he's paying, like, like helping me with zakat money. Can can I like delay it like after either one month, like then and then say, oh no, you're not giving me zakat money, and so he's actually zakat money, and but after paying after a month or something. Zakat becomes wajib fill four, fill four. Meaning, you have to give the zakat right away. No, you cannot. You can. Like, no, no, that's not that's not dispensing zakat. Okay. Uh, setting aside the money of zakat is not dispensing zakat. Okay. It is only when the ownership transfers. So, uh, usulan zakat becomes binding alal four, meaning as soon as you calculate the zakat, zakat now is wajib for you to give. What me the mechanisms you can utilize is uh, in the non zakat uh, time, speak to the person and uh, tell him like you know sometimes I have I get uh, uh, some money or some some uh, gifts or something like that which which I always want to give over, you know, over to you but I feel shy giving you directly like that so can you appoint some vakil right can you appoint some uh, some uh, someone else that you like a vakil to accept it on my behalf right on your on your behalf and now that fellow you can give him during that time as well so as soon as he takes Right, the zakat will be fulfilled. Your zakat will be fulfilled. Now you can tell the intermediary, wait, wait another month or two months, and then give it to him, so he doesn't feel like, oh, it's coming in Ramadan time or anything like that. Okay, you can do that. Okay. 
Yes. Sorry, just a quick on the, as for, you know, paying, paying out zakat. So, for example, for in the case of debt, if someone has a, like, a, uh, I have to pay someone back, and he told them, he told me, instead of sending me, pay my zakat out. Instead of paying me, pay out or pay my zakat out. He can make uh, a tokil towards you to pay out the zakat. Should shouldn't be a problem. Not that, that be out of the capital, which is out of the the old money. Um. So okay. Let me think about it because because I, I I want to make sure. Yes, it can be done. It should be able to done. So let me see if there are going to be any issues with it. Because, uh, uh, because he's just trying to reconcile his debt and making you wakil that uh, consider it paid and you have uh, uh, my to wakala that you can go and give give out my zakah on my behalf, right? But uh, but let me see if there is any anything missing there. Yes, sir. Yes. Take them. Take them. Uh, we, we, how many hours we have? Yeah. We can go to the Masjid and take the coffee and drink. Take a little. Okay. Let me finish this slide. I think after that is only few, uh, 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 the facts. <laughs> All right. So the last two ones are uh, the, that um, uh, incorrect avenue is a non Muslim. Right? You cannot give your zakat to the non-Muslims. Only non-Muslims you can give to is the Mu'alla Fatal Qulub if that is established. And uh, yes, and uh, Mu'alla Fatal Qulub doesn't have to be uh, the... Uh, uh, miskin, yeah. Okay. Right. But, but uh, at the same time, please be careful. Please be careful. Don't get stung. Right. Um, I, I know of actual incidents where non-Muslims, uh, they, they roam around only to get the money. Right, so that they can go and buy drugs, so, uh, and they play with your iman by saying like some statements of shahada and this and that. Whereas in reality, they're not; uh, they have no intention whatsoever. Right, and uh, it was an incident we found out, and later on uh, we found out from from some of the friends that in other uh, majalis he openly says like, "Oh, I'm milking them." Right, so uh, so be be careful, be vigilant. Right. And finally is the zakat monies cannot be given out as wages and remunerations. Many of the massages and organizations, they, they fall trapped to this, that they take the zakats out and then they say we are paying imams for, uh, through it. Or we are paying uh, uh, the, the other uh, 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 cleaners and all these things. And a portion of that is coming from the, the zakat amounts. It cannot be used uh, in that respect. You have to see every individual that is actually receiving this, whether he is eligible for the zakat or not. And then uh, you can give him give it to him in his possession okay inshallah let's uh, let's pause here five minutes and then we're going to continue okay would you mind taking questions or? yeah yeah um sorry i think still you have uh, you need to talk about the, the basket thing right no baskets baskets will come okay let's talk about this basket then and also the people who are receiving because they, they really don't uh, receive the yeah, that 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 discussion will come. That whether you can pay in kind, you can pay in kind. If you buy a basket out and then pay that out as a cut. Uh, then then that zakat will be paid out. But yes, Then the zakat will be paid out in the in that respect. Uh, however, we we're going to talk about uh, it uh, slightly later on. That you, uh, it is like you are using the zakat money to make that basket and then giving it out. Not that you uh, you give the money to the uh, to the organization. That you make boxes out of the zakat money. Okay, there's a slight difference in there because the, uh, if you are going to give the money to the organization, are they eligible for zakat or not? If they're not eligible for zakat, then while they make these boxes for the Ramadan and everything in that, right, they, they are utilizing the zakat money, right? Now, uh, uh, um, if you make them the wakil to do all this, fine. But are they use, using all the money in the proper man, uh, avenue and everything? Not necessarily, right? So it it will uh, lead to some deficiency in your zakat payments, right? Now, in in Pakistan, India, another thing is done. 
you have a caterer right you tell the caterer by i am hiring you right i'll give you separately for hiring but I, uh, this is the amount i have to spend on zakat i want you to make food out of it okay make like digs big big digs out of it and uh, we are going to feed the the recipient of the zakats okay so uh, you have to confirm that the recipient is mustahik zakat right if he is then the all the money that you have spent to make that everything we will give it out to them and your zakat will be paid off right if the, they are not mustahik zakat then your zakat is going in in voice so what the like what's the proof in principle for giving in fines like you know i just want to because you always talk about uh, Uh, the, the, uh, what's the what's the proof? Remember the usul I mentioned be, uh, before. That one usul that we always go by is anfaal al fukara, right? Um, that that uh, uh, the idea is for you to help out somebody which is going to benefit them. Now uh, you know that if I give thousand rupees or thousand dollars to uh, somebody, uh, they are going to misuse the uh, money and they are going to waste it probably. right because people who don't have that much money they are not really good with handling money as well right so you from your end you want to benefit them so you say like instead of that let me make 5 5 kilo of uh, buckets of uh, atta and flour and all these things and let me go to their house and give it to them right now what you have done is you have handed over the ownership over those kind those those commodities if they want they can throw it away right they they have the full ownership to do it but now their um, uh, usage is restricted they are going to only utilize it or if they want they can sell it off and use the money for something else so that's okay that's okay yeah because you made the owner them the owner of it yeah. that's what an example came uh, some time back uh, the person said like uh, you know in our house especially this is a big problem in pakistan and everything uh, uh, clean, clean drinking water in in smaller areas right so the uh, the issue came out can we uh, use zakat to make a well for the community or uh, or the hand pump for the community now the problem is the same if you are going to put uh, a hand pump and you are going to leave it for the welfare of the, of the that entire community nobody took the ownership of it zakat is not fulfilled right so the way around for that uh, the fuqaha mentioned that yes you get the hand pump established and then choose one of the good individuals within or uh, within the community who is zakat recipient right and handle uh, hand over that uh, uh, ownership of that hand pump to them with the encouragement use it for the benefit of the people just as it will benefit you right so that that hand pump will will help her out or him out and it will help everyone out similarly what you can do is you don't have to put it out, outside in the main you can have the hand boring done in the house of that that, that person who is the recipient and tell them please you know get, gain rewards by by giving it out to people and many people do it because after a, a house has become known oh so and so house they always giving out water to drink and everything and people come like making lines to get the water and everything so those things can be done yes definitely Uh, another question about uh, the management fee. So, for example, life or any other charitable organization, they have between I would say between ten percent to fifteen twenty percent of their management fee. And when I talk to them, they say that the money really goes to the people who are actually working full time, employees, distributing that uh, to the needy people, uh, whichever country it is. So the question is, uh, so if I give thousand dollars, should I make it up uh, doing like eleven hundred dollars, ten percent, just so yes. that? Okay. Absolutely. Because they consider them in a family. Uh, <coughs> no, they're not. they know that and that's what i was uh, alluding to that in our times most of these people are not amili right they they are not workers to collect the zakat dispensing the zakat is a different thing right that's not even collection so the way it used to work uh, in the older time was that these amilin that were sanctioned uh, from uh, the khalifa himself to go and collect they would go in the hot sun and everything stand on the road sides right and the people people coming and traveling by they would one by one ask them okay we oh how much cattle do you have how much this have so they would calculate everything and tell them that this is your uh, share of zakat that you have to give, give out now they would say like okay i'll uh, my uh, um, farm is this area that area or uh, you can come and collect it 
right so they they would actually go out doing the really hard hard work and then they would go collect it bring it back to the khalifa and the khalifa would then from the collective zakat you give them their uh, their uh, wages right not that they will be given a portion of it no they will get their wages from it the, the reason why this is mentioned in the fuqaha uh, separately is because uh, there is a masala called qafiz al tahan that you are not allowed to be paid from the fruit of your own labor right if i hire somebody to cut the uh, cut and thresh the the, the grains you can't say like okay you you bring and th- all the grains in and then you can take two buckets from it no you cannot do that right you have to pay him separately from elsewhere is it a matter of dispute or is it like unanimously agreed upon uh the, they do not come under amil like it, it could uh, uh, no uh, uh, that matter is slightly different because uh, whether whether these are coming under amilin or not uh, there are some scholars in contemporary times who have basically made a, a long jump to make that assertion that these are also amilin okay. that that's what has happened yeah, that's what i heard from them. Uh, another question is about distribution of the money. So let's say if I have, say, thousand dollar argument say, to give me that, is it recommended, or what do you think in terms of practice that you first give a little portion of thirteen from your family, or you know, and then give a little bit in terms of question? <coughs> your question is re- referring to the uh, Shafi Masla. Imam Shafi Rahmullah says that when Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has mentioned the 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 different masarif, that you must dispense in all those masarif. right so now if you uh, from the hanafi perspective you're not obliged to you can you can dispense in one or you can dispense in four out of five four out of six or or six out of six it doesn't matter okay right um just along with the same question that you were discussing about about uh, dispensing for uh, the workers and everything in my discussion with the um, uh, was was the brother's name brother umar yakub right brother umar yakub from ifsa in our discussions with him um i asked him specifically about this do you use zakat monies to pay out the employees and everything so and he mentioned to me no absolutely not okay. right the reason why they have maintained a separation of zakat, zakat and the sadaqa and everything is that uh, all their um, employee uh, expenses and everything and rental and all those things they are covered from other areas not the zakat amount so they they are very particular in how they are going to dispense their zakat out yeah. so some of the uh, frequently asked questions and now there, i think there are th- three or four slides left only can zakat be given to some uh, someone poor who we know who does not have any sound income this this normally comes about because we have an assumption that the uh, so and so is uh, a poor zakat is calculated as per the financial condition of the recipient right for this the recipient must confirm whether they have net zakatable asset less than hisab tldr short of it you have to ask right don't feel shy about it ask we did one hadith uh, some time back with regards to uh, the person who who is uh, uh, who will be taken to task um, for not accepting zakat whereas he was eligible to receive zakat and he had people dependent on him right people were depending on him to provide he is not able to provide them and somebody is willing to give him zakat and he is showing kibber he is showing haughtiness from his side no no i don't accept zakat right we have to we don't understand these basic uh, uh, emotional concepts within deen that yes sometimes your hand is low sometimes you are in the uh, in the rough of rough patch and you have to utilize the uh, the help of the community it does not degrade you it it only shows you that when you have something uh, better from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you should be willing to help them out as well okay so merely assuming that some uh, someone is poor is not sufficient it could be that the, they have jewelry or other savings which uh, others do not know about and that is more a lot of time that is the case um, uh, they may have an heirloom jewelry that they don't want to sell they don't want to like and i know many of uh, many people from within my family as well they, they are holding on to the jewelry where uh, uh, with though they don't want to sell it or anything like that and it's been like 100 years and 200 years and and they are living in poverty right for no reason okay so um, it could be that the person has that kind of a jewelry or some other uh, other other thing hold uh, stashed aside and everything but 
it does it's not out there in front of you so you assuming they don't have it doesn't give you enough uh, leverage to just give them the zakat like that do i have to give zakat on only in money or can i buy some a commodity and give zakat this was your question that was coming before right imam abu hanifa rahmullah opinion is that zakat can be given in kind so if you know gen, uh, a genuine zakat recipient who does not have a working car you can buy a car with, with the zakat money and give it to him as a zakat I mean, you can help him out in that way right this this may not be the ideal right but it will give some surety that the zakat monies are utilized towards the right avenue rather than being misappropriated by the zakat recipient similarly you can purchase food items clothing other things and uh, and then dispense them as zakat the the crux is that whatever you dispense goes directly towards the uh, ownership of the recipient and a question was asked last year um, when you are actually buying out these foods and everything then what what value what uh, amount do you keep in mind do you keep in mind the value of the food item that is cooked or worth of the value raw, raw materials right so if you are uh, making something to uh, food item to give them then uh, then you are going to go by the uh, the raw materials that, that you are purchasing so that you can give, give it out to them right or if it's a catering company and they have given you the uh, some standardized uh, option that that you pay this much and we will make sure you have this abundant uh, level then in that case uh, uh, there, there was a discussion uh, uh, that that you you can actually utilize that as well however it's not recommended because uh, because not all the time caterers are going to keep up the same standard if they know that this is going out in zakat right so you 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 want to make sure that it is the best that is that you are actually giving out to them Okay. Right. Another is my father lives in India and he knows a family that is zakat eligible. If I send money to my father to spend on my family, will my zakat be fulfilled? Now this was the understanding of the the agency, the wakala, right? The father will become the wakil, but who is he becoming the wakil for? Is he becoming a wakil for you to dispense your zakat to that family, or is he becoming the wakil for that family to collect zakat from you? right this will make or break the case if the uh, if uh, you are going to make the father uh, wakil on behalf of the family the family must know that he is the wakil to collect right let's uh, we have already provided that the family is recipient of the zakat right so he the father should become a wakil on behalf of that family to collect the zakat from you in this case as soon as you send right send the zakat over to the uh, to your father your zakat is fulfilled now the father on, at his ease can uh, send give it over to the family many a times um, um, these families are so poor that uh, they are not able to take care of the zakat monies right when the uh, zakat money comes once uh, one time oh, uh, 1 lakh or 2 lakh uh, 200000 rupees are coming to them and they suddenly don't know how to utilize it right so they waste it up so because this, there is an intermediary who has taken possession of the wealth on on their behalf right he can also dispense it slowly slowly on a monthly basis just to help them then they will remain afloat and they will become a, a better affluent in their uh, own, own way without actually wasting the money out as well another question that may come in this part is uh, what uh, value are we going to take uh, me going to the western union and paying the zakat out into, uh, to somebody um, what they receive is that the zakat paid or what i have paid including the services and everything is that the zakat right and so understand one thing that because you are in canada your your zakat calculation is in canadian dollars okay so the, uh, your dispensation has to be in the dollar amount number 2 the, uh, the 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 expense for the transaction is not involved in the zakat that has to be from uh, on the side from your pocket okay so make sure you let them know uh, on the receipt it is shown what is that the the exchange rate so tell your father or whoever is the intermediary that i am sending this much amount at this rate meaning this much of the zakat money please make sure to dispense this much amount okay so there is no ambiguity left i have some interest money received from the bank is it zakatable kya sawal hai <laughs> the mandate of interest money is, is that it must be dispensed in the zakat avenues without any intention of uh, any reward it's it's ghalazat is filth in your hand you you don't say like oh let me clean clean the poop on my hand uh, ho hoping rewards from allah subhanahu wa taala from it for it no you need to do it you need to eat afterwards 
right so uh, issue with the interest money is it must be thrown away it must be given given out to some avenue in uh, without any intention of reward right so if that is the case the question doesn't even come whether you have to pay zakat on it the, the more you delay in getting rid of that interest money you are uh, accruing sins upon yourself right so give them out find find the avenue give them out over that so so you calculate your net asset after removing this you don't even put it in your account. Yeah, the, the, my maqsad over here is that you, you shouldn't be even, uh, even be asking this question because you shouldn't have the interest money in your... No, the reason right? is like in a lot of uh, yeah, long-term investments, in their you know, uh, calculations or whatever, they have a lot of interest. So that will be considered... Assess for the entire year where you're getting your interest uh, accruals from, right? And on a monthly basis, as soon as they, they come, give them out. No, give no, them no. Out. But the, the company itself, I'm saying. Yeah. In their financial. Hmm. So when you're calculating our uh, net worth there, then you have to remove that interest part. Yes. Because that's considerable amount. We, we already spoke about that, yeah. that, that, that will not go into your Zagatable assets anyway. Right? So based on this, the, the, the fatwa is there that you're not going to include your interest money as Zagatable. Are Bitcoin Zagatable assets? Right. Understand that um, those who are uh, um, sufficiently aware of the working of blockchains, working, working, uh, working of uh, bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies, they are in themselves mal wealth. Right. And secondly, they are also thaman. They are also currency. Uh, people may discuss uh, even even as a high a level as Mufti Taqi Usmani Sahib, who does not consider it to be a currency as yet. Right? Still, um, it goes against the usuls. It goes against the usuls that the, that a thaman gains its thamania from it being transacted as a thaman, and Bitcoin is being transacted as a thaman. Right? People are buying uh, soft drinks and milk and everything through Bitcoins. Right, and it's they're not doing it here; they're doing it in some European countries. But it's being utilized. There is a good chunk of people who utilize it as as a proper zamania. So you are going to treat it as a, uh, a current asset for yourself. Can we dispense zakat in masjid zakat box? We already covered this. General answer is absolutely not. No, you cannot unless you have done background check on the masjid and the masjid has given transparency on their usage of the zakat monies and that how they, they collect and where do they take it out. Then yes, absolutely based on that analysis and your assessment, you can, you can dispense in that manner. With your explanation of mutual funds and uh, multiple shares in business, isn't it extremely complex to calculate the zakatable shares? When did, when, when did that ever stop us from actually investing, right? People, people don't know how the stock market works, but everybody is ready to uh, buy GameStop and short sell GameStop, uh, GameStop and all those things, eh? right? Uh, it, is, it is difficult. It is, uh, it is difficult and it's complex. But um, just like any other financial uh, uh, financial um, uh, products and everything, you, you have to. You have to do the due diligence in whatever you are doing. We are no longer living in a country or in, uh, living in a time when uh, your income is dependent on how many tons of crops you, uh, you're producing. No, you in one place sitting in, in Tandu Adam, you could be an owner of seven or eight or ten or hundred different companies uh, in minute, minute shares. That, that technology has come. So since that has come, the complexity has come along with it. You, we should have actually um, uh, scholars and organizations and, and these kind of services available where we, we could hire individuals to do all these kind of things. Right? And it should be done by, 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 uh, by uh, people. I mean, uh, people ask me sometimes. I started a project uh, uh, last year as well to do a little bit of a review of what kind of stocks are are valid and what kind of stocks are uh, uh, what would be the ratio between their zakatable assets and everything. But it's, it, it takes a lot of time and effort, a lot of a lot of interconnection and everything. I just don't have that much time. And so uh, hopefully some other people will will gain the momentum and do the work inshallah is security damage deposit for my house by my landlord zakatable never thought of it eh? yes it is zakatable because what is that damage deposit that's a loan that's a loan that you have given to the landlord he's, he's going to keep it by then but isn't he's going to deduct it later on anyway you go into this uh, 
कौन सा यार कैल्सन ग्रुप्स और गोइंग टू दिस बोर्ड वॉक यू नो फॉर श्योर नाइन्टी परसेंट ऑफ दैट डिपॉजिट इज गॉन राइट इसका रिजल्ट ना राइट सो नाउ अंडरस्टैंड रिमेंबर व्हाट व्हाट आई मेंशन देन मस्ट बिकम मुतहक्कक राइट द एक्सपेंस मस्ट बिकम एस्टैब्लिश्ड सो यस पॉसिबिलिटी इज दैट इट्स ऑल गोइंग टू बी taken away by the damage deposit but until that actually gets established it is still a loan and if you give the loan that has to come back you have to give the down okay and mostly it is for one year can i detect an approximation percentage from the damage deposit as it is very likely to be charged right uh, understand again uh, we, we discussed this about uh, actually it i should have discussed maybe, maybe it comes later on rrsp right if it comes later on that we will just skim over it even with rrsp and everything you know we we sell a cpp you don't have access to it rrsp you have partial access to it right so there are some funds that you have partial access in the sense that you can go and take them out but you'll have to pay a hefty fee for it right as as a penalty so uh, if you go to nzf canada national zakat foundation um the, the, the one that they have in canada they their opinion is when you are cancelling out your rrsp to collect the zakat uh, to calculate the zakat on it you are going to assume that the 10% or whatever percentage will be uh, levied as a penalty you deduct that amount and then on the remaining you calculate the zakat right but but that is incorrect that is their stance right but that is incorrect because of this usool that the that potential penalty that is sitting there is still not mutahakkak it's not established upon your shoulders right so only when you actually decide to cancel the rrsp and you take it out and that money gets taken out then you will give the zakat zakat j what was your question uh, security deposit from the viewpoint of uh, the landlord hmm would that be the card payable 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 for the payable. landlord yes but he is holding someone's money but he is still like exactly <coughs> okay um let's continue forward and yeah this i have a necklace that came down from my mom and i want to keep it for my daughter i am supposed to pay zakat on it or not someone said that if i keep it for my daughter i don't have to pay zakat on it but also i cannot use it okay right so if this kind of a heirloom is normal very common in in our families that uh, something is is belonging to the family so mother say like oh this is for for uh, zainab or this is for fatima or this is for this right so you have to understand is while the necklace is in in your possession uh, it is not your daughter's okay you have kept it aside for your daughter does not mean that it is now now the daughter's so two options could be here you have kept ownership of the necklace for yourself and plan to gift it later on the neck uh, ruling will be the necklace is your asset and you will pay zakat for it okay the uh, other option could be you have already gifted it to your daughter right and the requir uh, requirement is to actually hand over the necklace to her uh, but thereafter you are keeping it amana for her when she grows older in this case the ruling is going to be that uh, the necklace belongs to your daughter and you are not, you are not going to use it right without her permission you need to get her permission you cannot say like i am her guardian so i have her permission <laughs> right so also as long as your daughter is not baligh she is not bound to uh, dispense any zakat on it once she become baligh she will pay upon it is it necessary to mention that this is zakat when giving to a needy person no it's not necessary right uh, you, uh, as long as you are sure that the recipient is zakat recipient genuinely you can give the zakat you you can mention like oh this gift came into my possession i think you are more benefit uh, you'll benefit more from it okay right any other questions now inshallah we'll con conclude with that resp is pretty much similar as rrsp right the only thing you need to worry about in there is which which securities are they investing in um secondly secondly the in the resp uh, is it considered as your uh, your account your money or is it considered as your child's account 
right now understand that um, while the resp is sitting there and you are contributing towards it uh, even though the beneficiary is your son you still have uh, 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 you, st you still have access to it you can cancel it out and take, uh, remove, uh, take it out so that it doesn't go there. even after the uh, the maturity and everything if the child decides not to go for it you, you can still uh, make the sorrow in it and change it over to your rrsp or or some other uh, kind of uh, uh, funding so which means it belongs to you not him so you will be uh, uh, giving all the zakat on it once he has taken over then it says so in that scenario, if we give the cut, then the money goes to that kid, but also it could be used for you know other uh, other things in the school. We don't know that, but I'm just saying, in that situation, can we use that money towards that type of? Understand. Okay, let's talk about how the zakat works in madaris. So you understand how uh, what is supposed to happen. Uh, in madrasas, what happens is uh, you um, is madrasa is the intermediary. They are the middle person. So they are going to become. They are they are going to become a wakil on behalf of those kids who are genuinely zakat recipient. Not only that. Uh, what the madrasa is going to do is that they um, they are also going to become the wakil on behalf of the the students to dis, uh, utilize the zakat monies on their behalf, not on them but on their behalf. Okay, these are two different uh, uh, wakalat contracts. Okay, they can be brought into one, and normally what the madrasa normally does is every year they they send out a paper form for the children to sign or for the, for them to sign, and they actually read it. They explain to them that this is what's happening. You you are being sponsored by through the zakat monies and everything. So you have uh, uh, you approve that you are zakat eligible, and you also approve that the madrasa can dispense the amount uh, uh, on your behalf for the madrasa. Okay, so uh, and then once everything is done, Madrasa has the ownership or the vakalat on it. They dispense accordingly what's the best suited way for uh, to help those Madrasa kids out, right? In this way, it is possible for them to dispense it in avenues which may not directly benefit those students, may then uh, indirectly benefit them, right? Other otherwise, uh, if we don't take this vakalat, then the Madrasa is bound to only spend on them and not the remaining. Yes, it can be done. Yes, provided it's done properly. Yes. Okay. Um, I guess the thing is for a vakil, does it have to be on paper? No, it doesn't need to be a paper. No, can be verbal as well. Yeah. But but we should we should bring about this um, uh, this uh, uh, activity within ourselves when we are appointing somebody vakil to actually verbally you know tell them you know I'm ta I'm making you my vakil. I, I'll tell you a very simple example. Even living here, you know, many many a times I uh, tell somebody like, "Oh, can can you sell this car for me?" Yeah. Right? So he said, "Like, yeah, Mufti Sab, don't worry." I said, uh, "So if I tell them, you know, I'm making you my vakil to sell this car, and I'm going to pay you a minimal, you know, hundred dollars to sell it." Right? He said, like, "No, no, no, you don't have money." So I tell them, "No, do this because this is the Sharia way." The, uh, the sunnah way of making wakil and then giving ujra on top of that uh, how will you learn these concepts if you're not going to practice them out right so even even within our friends when we want to say man can, can you do this when you go uh, go to pakistan buy me some uh, ch some chalhoze and everything whatever right so tell them like can i make you wakil you go and buy for it and then uh, in, i will pay you accordingly right so in, in, at least that way so we we alive some of the fiqh of our deen It can, yes. And in terms of land, if, I just want to clarify again. In terms of land, if a person has just a land uh, for a long term investment, 
and he gets uh, so he doesn't have to pay zakat on it if the crop land is crop. Except the, 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 the crop that he gets. No, if 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 he is he has crop, then he has to do uh, um, uh, other calculation. No, what? He's lease, lease it out. Muzarat. If he is doing muzarat, then he is getting income. So he just pays on income, income. But not on the land. Not on the land. So because I was thinking the long term investment is also similar kind of scenario. No, these these are different these different aspects. Uh, I mean, because we have taqsis uh, in the uh, the, the nusus in the ahadith and everything specific specific. So we apply them similarly, right? Other, otherwise, we could simply say like, oh, why do we have to worry about all the cattle and everything? Just get their market value and pay zakat on that, right? But no, it was revealed and Nabi Sallallahu established it. You know, if you have that many goats, you have to give one goat out, one jaza out, one uh, 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 like a uh, camel and everything now that hmm? I want to ask you about the miss the, 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 the payments that were missed from the hand like the from yes. previous year yes and uh, so <coughs> can you just a little bit throw some idea on like the repercussions or how to make it up or like I, I don't uh, see uh, um <laughs> I don't see any benefit in uh, mentioning the tarheeb, meaning what are the calamities that going to befall for for you having not paid in the past. The, uh, the 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 mandate from Sharia upon your shoulder is once you realize, oh, I, ha I have missed payments. The mandate is that you start calculating and start spending out, right? And come come to a place where you don't have to worry about it. So uh, my suggestion in that case would be the 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 crux is tahari is your discretion that you have to sit you have to calculate from the due diligence of your mind and everything come to a uh, come to a figure you know 2012 i didn't pay 2013 didn't, it must be like this 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 once you have done with the complete the hurry and discretion that is sufficient in uh hujjat evidence in sharia so you must pay that out once that is paid out alhamdulillah you can be self uh, 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 you can be completely happy that allah will subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, for any deficiency and everything. Same thing applies to salah as well. Right? Missed out anything, oh, I don't know how many salahs I have missed. Right? You sit and you make a guesstimate. And, but it has to be a very solid, genuine guesstimate and then you, you can co uh, cover them up. I don't. I don't know if any. Yeah. It, it, as I said, zakat is wajib al four. That so the zakat that were not paid out from before, they are still continuing upon your shoulders. Because the salah is like some other. <coughs> That's a different fiqh matter. Inshallah. Yeah. <laughs> But um, we, we don't want to take that dispensation of not making the uh, 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 qaza salahs because that also means we'll have to remake our nikah. So <laughs> we, want, we don't want to go into that, inshallah. Let's, let's inshallah stop here. Uh, may Allah give us tawfiq and understanding of all these intricacies. There are still many intricacies that we have not discussed. Um, uh, many type of questions which, which are not even evident in front of us. Um, you, you are more than welcome to send out your questions, uh, uh, inshallah. But it takes time. So please uh, be mindful of that. Sometimes I have to do a background search. And sometimes I just don't know the answer. And I, I need to ask other muftiyan about the answers and everything. And so it, it normally takes time. It's a learning thing for me for you and for all of us so that we can fulfill our duties in, in deen. May Allah give us tawfiq. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanakulam wa bihamdi. Kwanashadana astaghfirullah. Antubudai. Jazakallah.